Um, good evening and welcome to the October 2nd meeting of the Reading Select Board. Uh, this meeting is now in session. Uh, to, start, to start us off, um, we have Selectman Liaison Reports and, and Selectman Comments. So which side did I start with last time? Okay, I'll go with John then yeah, first. Because I was running in at the last minute. Yeah. The last minute. That's right. Um, that's I, right you yeah. know, it's been a week and I haven't gotten to anything, so none of yeah. my stuff popped. So I have my meeting, my, my report is very short. I have none. Okay. <laughs> uh, essentially, what John said, it's been a week there. So I have to vary. Uh, light week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we only met last Tuesday. I yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my report's the same. same. All right. <laughs> I, I, I see the balance of my time to the gentleman from County Road. Actually, yeah. Um, so um, there were uh, two two committees that I, I liaison and the liaison to that that met. Um, I wasn't able to go, but I was able to speak to someone on the committee and get a quick update. And I think. Uh, the one that many people in town will be interested in is the road, the Board of Health meeting that was held last uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, they're making some progress. Uh, they drafted a road in informational flyer um, or RIF <laughs> for, for <laughs> residents where most of the rat sightings have occurred. And um, I believe they've gotten that out. Is that right? Yeah. So that that's good, and and it um, yeah, it's an informational flyer. Um, Emmy Dove also noted that this is I found this kind of interesting that the apparent increase in rats that we're having may be due to uh, overproduction of acorns. So um, overproduction. So overproduction. So we can chop down the trees. I'm going to buy that. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> and, and so she, she so, and she said I, there's a term for it which I can't remember. Um, uh, maybe I don't know. And um, so more acorns, more rats, and this has happened over the past two years. Fortunately, um, it's too costly for oaks to keep up this competition mm -hmm. that they have with each other. So um, I, I mean, even they have financial restra restraints apparently. So they can't do this year after year. So we could expect a natural dying of off of rats as this food supply shrinks, assuming winter uh, cooperates with us as well, being a nice long and cold one. Um, she's, she's also going to look into uh, some other options on the biological front. Together with sanitation, there's a hope that the rat population in, in future years can be kept um, you know, at, a, at a, a decent low level. They're always going to be here, as we've, we've heard. Um, lastly, they announced that uh, their, their meetings will be generally Monday, uh, uh, the third Monday of every month at 6 p.m. So, so um, uh, it'll be more, much easier for everyone, everyone to attend. That's great. Um, the Climate Committee wanted me to let you know that they are going to be uh, asking us to consider building some electrical ve vehicle charging stations um, on town property, so we should think about locations. And I, they have a list of ideal locations or things to be considered when choosing ideal locations, and I'll, I think it's okay for me to forward that all, all, all to them, those ideal locations. Or have Bob, or have um, you do it, or something like that. Um, and that's it. Oh, Mr. Chair, yes. I, um, I lied. I do have something. Okay. <laughs> um, you should have started. Yeah. But anyway, so this is not something that's happened. It's something that's that's coming up on October 17th, which is the night after um, our next meeting. So I wanted to give enough notice for people to kind of get into their calendars. Um, at the library at 7 p.m., we're having um, a session um, about downtown parking and wayfinding and ways that um, we can really help support some of the you know the downtown businesses um, it's open to the public it'll be interactive um, we're still figuring out ways to kind of how to do it but to really get people's input and opinions on um, 
parking, uh, but also just sort of general um, downtown business support. So um, I think that you know now we're sort of as development is starting to um, happen in the downtown. Um, parking has always been an, uh, a key and central piece of it, um, and here's a chance for folks to come down and weigh in. So October 17th um, at the library at June 7, I think. Yeah. So come with your ideas and um, uh, looking forward to having seeing everybody there. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank. Good reminder, Barry. And the board is posted for that night, so you can expect to see some or all of us there. Okay. Uh, any topics not reasonably anticipated? We'll come up. We'll come up. And well, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yep. Um, jumped ahead. So now is time for public comment. Um, how many how many people would like to make just Bill and okay, and Lisa? Okay, so Bill, go ahead, Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill Brown, twenty-eight mile road. Uh, last week, I, on your last session, something came up about the grant from the fire department received, and Mr. Anderson brought up the fact that we should give it back to the tax, which I somewhat agree with. Uh, another alternative, I think, would be to set up a stabilization fund for use by the fire department only. And that takes, as you know, it takes two-thirds to get it out. That's a good compromise. I, I would have no problem with that at all. As stingy as I am. <laughs> yeah. And that would need to go on, on a... Um... <laughs> but uh, I, I think that would be a good compromise. Yeah. My concern, if it goes into free cash, uh, uh, it will go someplace else. Yeah. And I think you gave, as Dan said, you asked the taxpayers for the money. I think you could pay. I also understand that the ladder truck uh, has had a lot of problems. So you can use for that. You can use for road that. I have no no problems at all as long as it's used for the fire. Um, I would I would not support it. Used for any other. Yeah. Just a, can I respond? Yeah, I, 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 it, it's directly related to what he's. Yeah, I was going to say okay. something too. Okay. Um, but go ahead, go, go, go. Bill, I think the FinCom was. A few members were speaking favorably toward that approach. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. it was reported. Yeah. Yep. Um, of course, I immediately had thought of other uses for it. However. Um, yeah, that that does keep faith with voters, um, and and is appropriate. So, so the next step step would be for us to get it on an agenda item, and discuss uh, getting it on. Uh, well, it's just part of the budget part process. Of budget process. So you know, which, right. I mean, we have a financial forum um, on the tenth, and so not. Will that factor into our dis discussions and decision next week in classification? Because that that factors into setting the tax rate. Correct. Right. Yeah, Go ahead. Um, yeah. It's the first piece of information, and, and Greg, if you know differently, please say so. Um, we haven't hired the firefighters. We don't know when we will. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a deadline. So we don't know the cash flow in this fiscal year for the grant. And we're mm -hmm. not going to know until, I would say, February. That's correct. So it's, you could do an estimate now for some amount, whatever you want. If you want to wait till in, in other words, if you don't use that approach through classification, yeah. you don't need the precision. If you want to do something in tax classification and leave money yeah. on the table, you're going to have to just take a guess and I'll, I'll oh, help okay. with that. If you want to do something next April at town meeting and set up a little so that would need to go in in an article that we would submit to the it would be under the budget article it would be under the budget and we'll article. be talking budgets and okay summer the stabilization yeah. fund um uh, vanessa and then and then barry because i think you are okay. okay another uh item that can fall into <coughs> safety as far as budgeting goes is our casa which as we know um is not fully accounted for so uh, in which budgets so something else to consider yeah no I, that was the thing I was thinking about but um, um, go ahead there. so I, I was at the FinCom meeting where this in fact I was I brought it up at the FinCom meeting uh -huh. um, so um, we do have a financial forum on October 10th and I think the chair of FinCom was amenable to having this sort of be a discussion item in terms of uh -huh. um, you know what's the proper you know do, do we give it back do, you know Bill I didn't even think of that idea Rakasa, uh, which is something that I brought up, which is something that this board, um, mm -hmm. all of us, would, would have supported in the override if, if its funding had 
run out on July 1. So, you know, I, I think it's it's one of those things where, yes, we need to be cognizant of what we said we we're going to spend it on, but things change, and um, certainly it's town meeting that decides the budget, so starting it out in the financial form, I think, is appropriate, mm -hmm. um, and that's where it gets a full airing, yeah. and not just we're going to decide one way or the other, This you know, this board. So um, I think it will come up on the financial forum, and, and then probably further discussions as we go down the line. So that's fine, um, John. Yeah, I um, I needed the direct question actually on this topic to Bob. Yeah. That's okay. Um, should we get a legal opinion given the way that we wrote that override question? As to uh, is that I mean, is that important? I mean, we were very specific about how we wrote it, <laughs> and I think that what Bill is talking about kind of fits the bill. No. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, clearly we talked about um, money for both the fire department and police department. We were kind of specific about the way we wrote it. Yeah. Um, is it worth getting an opinion? Um, I can yeah. certainly ask. Um, I've talked to Sharon about this, and there's two different ways she could go, and she'll be in later. You can certainly ask her. Um, in a way, the federal money is a revenue. It has nothing to do with our budget. Right. So the fire department's budget is unchanged. There just happens to be extra revenue coming in the door. And so if that's the way you look at it, and it's ultimately up to her, then there's no need for talking to town council. Oh, okay. I will anyways, but... I, I'm just know, saying, given, given, the, given the way we wrote it, right, we were specific about it. <coughs> you know, and, and Dan raised a good point. Yep. I mean, you know, you, you want to be straightforward with the taxpayers. We asked them for money, they gave it to us. They had the expectation we're going to spend it a certain way. Um, and um, I'll ask. I just think we need to be sure about that. Yeah. Um, but I think what um, what Bill brought up is a very interesting solution. Yeah. Um, I mean, it kind of keeps it in the right slot, um, and it creates you know the unexpected things are the things that can kill you anyway in a budget. We all know that. So I mean, if there is a little extra there to be able to deal with, it, we are going to those firefighters are still going to be there when this grant runs up. So. Yeah, I mean, I remember discussing this with town council extensively uh, when the ballot question was written, and uh, his point was, I'll, I'll cut to the chase, that we can ask for the money in the ballot question, but it's town meeting that ultimately yep. decides how it's going to be spent. So um, I'll, you'll be, okay, so we'll, we'll wait on this. Yep. So the public comment period, um, uh, has started off as a comment among the board members. So let's get back to the public comment period. Anyone else like to comment? Lisa. Hi, um, I'm Lisa Egan and I'm the director of the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce and I'm also a resident. I wanted to speak on an issue later in the agenda that I'm not able to stay and be present for, which is hoping to make a comment about the mm -hmm. tax classification mm -hmm. on behalf of the Reading um, downtown businesses and retailers and service providers. Um, I'd like to respectfully request that you maintain the single tax rate. Um, I can tell you this summer, firsthand in talking to a lot of businesses, just being out and about was extremely slow for our retailers and our service providers here in Reading. And I just learned, sadly, that Raspberry Beret is closing, another Main Street business. Um, I think it's exciting that Reading has so many amazing commercial properties in the works. I think it's great. It's going to provide a much needed tax base for the town. But at only 8%, the numbers simply don't work to offset and doesn't provide a big savings to our um, residents. And I know we talk about this annually, I note. But something new came um, up this year that I wanted to just bring everyone's attention to, which was a twist called the so-called grand, grand bargain legislation that came through um, from Governor Charlie Baker. And the chamber hosted a business breakfast on this topic just last week. Um, the grand bargain is really a misnomer because it's actually going to cost businesses a ton. Yeah. I think the bargain was part of the um, the way they packaged it all together in an in avoidance of having to go to the ballot and having it be even more extremely yeah. impactful. So I'd like to read to you from the Massachusetts Law Review just to give just a quick update on what this grand bargain is because it sounds like a good deal because it's a grand bargain, but it's really um, very impactful. It's going to provide, um, it increases minimum wage, ends Sunday retail premium pay, and provides extensive leave. 
Um, the Baker, Governor Baker signed this bill over the summer. It will have a significant and lasting impact on every employer in the state of Massachusetts. The law is a compromise des designed to avoid potential ballot questions <coughs> which comprises an increase of state minimum wage, paid leave, and reduction in the sales tax. It contains key employment-related provisions, including a gradual increase of the state's minimum wage from the current $11 per hour to $15 per hour by 2023. And I'd like to note that we're already at the highest in the nation at $11, so it's a pretty significant change. A phase out of the requirement that certain employees be paid time and a half for Sundays and certain holiday requirements um, as found in the state's blue laws. We were one of the two states that still had that, so that's good because if you took the $15 minimum wage and kept time and a half, that would mean a starting wage of $22.50 for every employee in the state. Um, which, as you can imagine, would really cripple anyone who's open on a Sunday. Um, and the most significant change is a new institution of an employer-paid family and medical leave act. Specifically, employees would be able to take up to 12 weeks, 12 weeks of paid leave to care for a sick family member or new baby, and up to 20 weeks paid to attend to their own chronic medical needs. So how this is going to be litigated and enforced within the um, business community is unknown. Our lawyer, an employment expert at a firm in Boston, called it the Wild West because 20 weeks of paid leave is, is significant and truly mm -hmm. people deserve that for medical care and they deserve a lot of support, but it's, it's a major change and it's really unclear as to how it's gonna all play out. <coughs> I do feel like with the one-two punch of a possible major increase in taxes, if we were to split the rate now, most of our tenants, it goes right back into their um, rent as part of triple net. I worry it's a one-two punch and it's going to close more businesses in town. So I just wanted to, to note this law because it is confusing and I don't think the name of it is really very clear. Um, I think our businesses are going to be struggling just to cope with these significant changes that the state's putting forth that kick in in January 1. So I'm hoping you can um, consider that and give our businesses a year or two just to get settled into this new change and we can kind of see what the landscape is like in terms of the employment ramifications. Thank you, Lisa. And, and um, it's great to hear from the Chamber of Commerce. You know, I, I encourage you to come more often and give us your feedback. Uh, we'll obviously take that into consideration during the tax classification part of the meeting. And I, I took the liberty of asking uh, Senator Lewis to um, provide what sort of uh, compliance assistance will be available, because I understand that it's a big challenge. Absolutely. Most of most of our businesses can't afford to have a lawyer on hand, an arm retainer. That, that, so that's very helpful. That's exactly what I mentioned. So um, any other public comment? Yes. Hayden's Thomas's Arlington Street. Um, I'm, my neighborhood has continued to have concerns about some of the activity that's going on around the Lincoln Prescott project. Mm -hmm. um, and you, Andy, are the liaison. Yep. Um, is there any that we can do at this point? Uh, uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll, during the town manager's report, um, it, we'll, we'll discuss that. Okay. Yeah. That, not to shut you up, but, but um, yeah. Any, anyone else? All right. Seeing none. Um, now I can get the uh, back on track on the agenda. Um, Bob. Uh, thanks, Andy. Yep. So we might as well address that first. Before okay. Um, and Jean's here can correct me, but as we understand it, there's another neighborhood meeting scheduled either tomorrow or Thursday. Hopefully, you know about that. It's really it's 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 rather curious how these meetings come about. I I, I don't know who is arranging these meetings. Okay. Um, I believe there's a meeting next Thursday, but well, maybe it's, it's Thursday, sorry, next Tuesday. Tuesday but yeah. when it when the message went out, it didn't have a time. But in the message, it claimed that Swiss Bakers had, was in charge of determining the location. I don't know why okay. Swiss Bakers would have a stake in determining the location okay. of the meeting. So it's very confusing. Um, there's a lot of finger pointing in all directions. And and not clear leadership or organization. 
Uh, Bob, if we hear about a meeting, I'm sure you know, but we're probably in the same state you are, Gene. So, so um, uh, just a second um, th about that meeting. I heard about it from a, re a resident, so I, I think um, I'll, I'll talk to the developer and indicate the need for uh, a little bit better communication. And and any meeting for the public, um, the Swiss Bakers makes great food, um, but there it's a narrow uh, space and not really conducive to a public meeting. Um, and I think ideally f for access issues, safety issues, um, and accessibility issues for uh, people hearing and, and being heard, um, I, I, I'd like to see the, these meetings um, advertise well and set up to the extent possible um, in a town government building and in the evening when most people are available, not at 10 a.m. in the morning. Um, well, just to be clear, this is not a town meeting. I understand. I understand. So but we don't usually let private developers hold meetings in our town buildings. In our town buildings, okay. Well, we can we can we can talk about that. I mean, but if they want to approach us, we can maybe work something out. But yeah. it's a little unusual. Okay. And and the other part of sort of the neighborhood issue, I think, was there had been because I know I got some emails from you. There was some yeah. parking up on the sidewalks. Uh, they're attempting, weather permitting, to do some pouring this week. Yep. And if that was, is possible, they will be right back on site. Um, my understanding through them, and this may not be perfect, is except for the first day, they were only there sporadically. So they were not, not parking uh, off-site for the full day. But nonetheless, they assured us that they understand the rules and get back on the site, and it'll be very easy for them to get back on the site once they've finished pouring. <coughs> okay. Sorry. Yes. So, in the, part, in the agreement to the town, any developer that signed on February 23rd of this year, I'm sorry, of 2017, over 19 months ago, the town stipulated, and this was because of the, the ZBA board's decision, that the developer needed to have off site parking and that there would be no workers parking on, on the streets in the town of Red. In addition to that, the community development director would be in charge of uh, 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 acknowledging or, or reviewing this the, the off-site parking that the, that the developer secured, and that they would it would subject to the approval of the community development director. So there really shouldn't be. Or 19 months later, after making that agreement, there really shouldn't be offsite uh, parking issues on the street um, because this, the developer should be providing parking lot. And the, and the town should know about this parking lot. So in, that addresses that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, I guess the questions that I've had f for for Bob are, um, you know, it's 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 pretty clear in the permit that they need these. Uh, they need to set up parking in a parking lot once they cannot park in the lot. And I think that's been over a month since that happened when they did the original pour of the foundation. Just sec, Gene. Yeah. Um, and um, so um, I guess my question is how long have they been in violation of, of this and what are the consequences uh, of, of not sticking to their permit? I'm only been aware of it about for a week. So then the next question is, um, who is, what's the process for ensuring, ensuring compliance with these types of permits, P particularly big development ones that we're going to see coming up? Um, Jean. She, she had her hand up, too. Thank you. <coughs> Jean Delio's assistant town manager. Um, we became aware of this issue with mm -hmm. on-street parking, which is in violation of the Zoning Board of Appeals decision. Mm -hmm. um, that was last week. Mm -hmm. We reached out. I personally contacted um, the clerk of the works and the project manager mm -hmm. on Friday and had a conversation with the project manager and advised him that this was not a practice that the town of Reading would tolerate. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a very serious conversation about it. And I also told him that uh, it would not be 
uh, unusual, although it's not our preference, to issue a cease and desist order. Mm -hmm. We've done it in the past, and we do it again. So we've taken a very hard line with this developer. Um, I think, as the town manager just described, was once this concrete pour happens, <coughs> they will now, at that point, be able to have everything on the site. Mm -hmm. We have met with them. Mm -hmm. We have a construction management plan from them. Everything that they've provided for us indicates that there will be parking on the site. This one wrinkle, which involves the concrete pour, is what's creating the violation. Once that happens, they will be back on the site for the duration of the project. But they've been not able to park on the site, I think, since end of August, early September, and they've been constructing, doing construction work. <coughs> but but more, my, my, my question is a more of a general one of process. Who, you know, I, I, you you found out about uh, the violation through me, um, I, I believe. Maybe maybe other people, but but I remember we got uh, emailing. Okay. Responded to. Okay. Um, but what's the pr again? Who's responsible for checking these things out <coughs> so that we don't find out of We've the weeks Christine later? We've asked Lusk mm -hmm. to be our eyes and ears on the site. And we have regular emails with her. She was the, one of the people that came to all the 40B meetings and represented that she would be um, in coordination and in communication with the neighbors on a regular basis. So we asked her to please let us know if there are any issues. And we have an ongoing email exchange with her. So we're having a private citizen she check on offers, these. We don't have the bandwidth to be out on the site. It's myself, the community development director, um, who only works part time. So we sure. thought it was most efficient to have someone who actually lives in the neighborhood let us know if something's going on. I mean, we have to we have to rely on people calling in. We just can't send people down there on a daily basis. So, well, we well, let's, well, let's hold, 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 hold. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll um, we can't get into this now. Um, I, I, I think we need to, I'd like to improve the process on this. We have many other developments coming in town. And um, I, I'm, I'm not pleased with the way things played out here. Um, and, and, I, and, and the fact that they may not be facing any, they, you know, they violated their permit for quite a while. Um, and they may, there may not be any consequences to that. So um, I, I am concerned about that, yes. That has a chilling effect to me, that the, the town makes agreements with developers and then the, the agreements have no meaning. The, 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 the huge forces around uh, uh, Lake, uh, Lakeview Eaton mm -hmm. should be very concerned. Um, they're putting a tremendous effort in. Yeah. And the idea that, that uh, the agreements that they come to yeah. um, will mean, mean nothing to the town mm -hmm. in the end and that the town will take no role in um, assuring uh, the neighborhood uh, uh, a sense of safety and just a matter of, of keeping their word um, to be respectful is, is very, very concerning. Right, right. I mean, it's only five minutes away, a quick drive by. But um, all right, we'll, we'll put that on the agenda for a, a future meeting. Um, any other public comment? Bob's going to make a public comment. Well, he's going to finish his report. <laughs> I'd ask the board, um, one of you has a uh, sorry, to geez. close the um, state uh, election warrant, mm -hmm. and then the town clerk can have that. Oh, that's a good idea. You can all sign it. <laughs> November 6th. Now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, move to close the state election warrant to be held on November 6, 2018. Second. Do we have a copy of it? Going around. Oh, okay. So I would like to look at it. Is the Just ballot? one copy. Is the ballot out here? Uh, yeah, it probably is. Cause you want the whole thing, Dan? No, I, I got a copy. Did you sign that last one? Don't ask me about question one. Good, we have to. Do you hear? Are absentee ballots available yet or no? Yes. They are. Okay, thank you. They became available today. Okay, great. Uh, while you're signing, I'll, I'll continue. Uh, yeah, I'm, tomorrow, not, I'm not going to look at the ballot questions. <laughs> tomorrow's a FEMA and FCC uh, 
nationwide test of the emergency alert system and the wireless emergency alerts. It's happening at 2.18 p.m. Mm -hmm. And with a follow-up on TV and radio at 2.20. Um, the superintendent advised all uh, the teachers and advised all the parents today of this so that, you know, if your phone's on at 218 and you're near a cell tower, you're going to get a, an emergency alert. And I know Andover did a special press <coughs> release about it because they're concerned their residents might think it has something to do with the gas issue. Yeah. So it's really important that people understand this is just a test. Uh, tomorrow, uh, October 3rd, it was postponed from a, a week or two ago. Um, as you've seen in a press release, we had 100% compliance by our local businesses with the alcohol operation that the police conducted, which is very good. Not always the case, but it's often the case, and it's, it's good to see. Um, last week, uh, Thursday night, John, um, John Halsey with, was, was with me, and we welcomed back, uh, somewhat as a surprise, uh, Erica McNamara as our CASA director. Oh, oh fantastic. She had left for a UMass mm -hmm. Lowell and really liked her job, but she loved this one and wanted to come back to do what she loved. So we welcome you back. Uh, quite happy. We have a she has something to do with it. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's good. Um, I appreciate the Chronicle printing a clarification um, last week about a water main article. Um, North Reading is, is happy. Um, I have a picture here without being too graphic. We, uh, we had a terrible sewer emergency uh, two. in the works um, down by Charles Street. But our crew went out and got seven pump trucks. We have two. We rented five. And they were able to complete repairs in a way that is not written up in any textbook. They came up with a really creative solution of diverting the flow, if you will, while they could get down there and work. So it's not a pleasant topic. I told them to be careful about what pictures they posted. <laughs> um, I thought the comment that was most helpful to me was from the fire chief, who just simply said it was a problem stand uphill. It happens. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Exactly. <laughs> yes, John. I think we need to vote on that thing. We'll yes, we do. Yeah. We do. Next, uh, uh, next Wednesday, as I Sunday. mentioned, you'll be posted to meet at the high school library. And again, that's the Scatini Library in the high school. I guess. Yes. Yes. Yep. Duly noted, sir. <laughs> Um, we had some inspectors out, I'm not sure if it was today or yesterday, at Washington Park to discuss or uh, to examine the rent mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. They're going to come back to us with some kind of a proposal, but they did want to make clear there's no need to close Washington oh, Park. That's the good. problem that's is not good. that serious. Okay. Yeah. If there's even a problem. Yeah. Um, and then just to remind uh, you, Andy, and the board, mm. uh, there are three driveway hearings we'd like to schedule if October 30th is convenient. I think it's better to have them all in one night for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I, 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 I think I agree, <coughs> and I think that I should probably come in. We need to meet and okay. go over the next several months of what's what, what's happening. Because um, we will want to notify voters well in Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, That's all. I wanted to ask you a question. I got an a email from the clerk today about uh, getting minutes out, which I, I always like to encourage, although I, you know, as liaisons, um, mm -hmm. please remind the uh, boards, committees, and commissions to, to take notes and to get the notes into us so we can comply with the open meeting law. This one happened to be about a, a, a a group that I'm the lead <coughs> to, so so I'll contact them. But you said there were some some in, there the might only, might I'm be only some inaccuracies. The one that went to the you individually as select board members. <coughs> um, the information in the attachment was not up to date. Uh, okay, so so I can check that out, and then before I approach. Um, well, this is the one for you and your minutes as a select board. Oh. So oh. Not any other board or committee yet. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's what we received in the mail. Correct? Right, right, yes. That's what I was. Got it, asking. got it, got it, got it. We do, we do act on our minutes pretty timely, don't we? Yeah. Well, I mean, I. Some of the executive session ones we should yeah, I've get dragged, to approving sooner. I've dragged my feet on those. Uh, no, and we're we're a, catching up. You've done a generally good job. You know, it's not being posted our packets. There, we don't have, re, I think, a lot of the 2018 packets up on the site. Is there something holding that up? Is They're that on the calendars. But do they, are they on our board page? On. Are they on the, you know, the They're electronic not in the But ultimately, they'll be uploaded. The web page. Yeah. The web page. Yes. So I can do that. Who's, who's, who's shop is that? Recognize more. 
Oh, no, I, I, okay. I put them on the calendar, but then they don't, I thought they went to the same old places. Oh, right. Laura, did you want to, did you have something to say? I just wanted to clarify that um, a lot of the, where it shows that there's um, minutes missing for the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. is, is meetings that were posted where they attended with other committees. Yeah, oh, right. okay. Okay. Like, okay. So that, that's all we need to do is update that the minutes are provided by somebody else. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's easy work. So you can put a dummy uh, document in there. It just says that if they open it up. Correct. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Can can you do that for us, <coughs> or Caitlin, or somebody, Perfect. anybody? Thank you. Um, it's going back surgically through time. Surgically. Surgically. That's that's frightening. Back to 2015. Time, all right. Time thank, travel. Thank you very much. But it's a good reminder to us, uh, to us all to get the word out to the BCCs. Oh boy. Uh, so we need to vote on that. Yeah, now we need to vote. Can I ask one question? Yes. Real quick? Is this going to be a three page ballot now? A two page? Because of all the verbiage of the questions? It's a one page ballot, double sided. Oh, you got it all on two sides of one. Wow, it's going to be small print. Right. Um, <laughs> it's right there, it's very small print. Yeah. We will have magnifying glasses available on election day. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Victor. Hey, Victor. Good to see you. Uh, how about that? Have a seat. Can you need to You know what? It, 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 it. How many politicians does it take to figure out? <laughs> All right. I'll cede the floor to uh, the gentleman from Beacon Hill. Which one? Hmm? Oh. The gentleman. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Mr. Jim Dwyer, who I believe is retiring this year. You can't come quickly enough. Uh, <laughs> you, you'll miss it. Are you talking about tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Both. First. Both. And then, um, our, our, um, um, man to the north, or North Reading and North and, Parish, yeah, North Parish. Um, and and I'm sorry, I'm having a senior moment on your name. It's terrible. It's easy name, Brad Jones. Brad Jones. Brad Jones. <laughs> also the minority. Yeah, I, I actually called you years ago when we spoke um, about some issue. Um, but um, so apologies on that one. But welcome. Thanks for coming. It's not you, Andy. I called you Barry at the beginning of the oh. meeting. So. <laughs> you're a good. I'm going to take you off the hook. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I just call uh, my kids and wife by all one long name: <laughs> Allison Ryan, Lee, Al Uh Senator Lewis. Um, you got my name right. I did. I did. Can you get your first name? First name, <laughs> Senator. <laughs> I thought. His first name was Senator. I, I don't know. Um, so, who would like to speak first? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, I'll start. Um, sort of by virtue of the delegation. Um, the, uh, Bob uh, had sent some questions. Mm -hmm. So, if it's okay with the board, uh, we'll start with those, try to yes. respond to those. The, uh, one of the questions was uh, FY18 surplus, excess revenues, unspent budgeted funds. Um, how is sustainable through FY19? What are the one time plans? Uh, and I guess the best answer is that they're still in development. Uh, the governor filed uh, a recommended plan uh, in the middle of July uh, that's still being um, reconciled between the House and Senate. Uh, I would expect that within the next two, not longer than three weeks, uh, that that will be resolved. Um, there are probably a number of issues that are of interest to uh, the cities and towns uh, in the Commonwealth. Uh, there is uh, a significant amount of money that the governor is recommended be spent on school safety, um, which covers a number of different areas, which I'd be happy to get into, but it's about $72 million in total. Um, and there's also uh, some additional money to be put in for the special education circuit breaker, which would hopefully bring the reimbursement for FY18 up to uh, the 75% level. Uh, regional school transportation, money for clean water projects, um, some additional money for um, uh, supplemental money for roads, roads and bridges, sort of like a chapter 90, mm -hmm. uh, but not through a bond bill, but through cash. So there's money in there that would find its way uh, back to cities and towns. Um, obviously, with the election season, it's been a little bit crazy on Beacon Hill. Um, obviously, that the House Chair of Ways and Means wasn't reelected, and the Senate Chair of Ways and Means became the Senate President. So there's sort of uh, that dynamic going on. But I expect shortly the Comptroller of the Commonwealth will be sending his usual annual missive that says we have to get this done. So I think that that is under, in process and underway. And, and, and I think there'll be a lot of pieces um, that the governor filed that will either be accepted as filed or accepted in a manner that will be pleasing to cities and towns. Uh, so I think that hopefully bodes well for cities and towns. Uh, obviously, whether some of that is sustainable in terms of money that comes in for FY18 uh, being carried forward, uh, that's a, a function of obviously the revenues that come in at FY19, thus far revenues to FY19. Uh, our head of benchmark, um, tens of millions of dollars. Obviously, September's revenues aren't in yet, but we're on a, a positive trajectory to meet the benchmarks that we built the FY19 budget on uh, and hopefully still exceed those benchmarks. Um, one thing that may be also included in that supplemental budget uh, final deficiency is there may be some money that's set aside in reserve to deal with some of the Merrimack Valley issues. Um, probably in a manner that's to front load money with the idea that hopefully that money is recovered from Columbia and Unitil yeah. uh, or an ISOS uh, after the fact. 
um, but at least upfront money because that's one of the big concerns in trying to deal with some of the problems up there. Um, one of the other questions was uh, FY19 budget. Uh, FY19 budget is pretty much complete. Um, I think we had uh, we had I think the highest level of circuit breaker funding ever, which is 319 plus million dollars. Um, the um, there's a couple of outstanding amendments for outside sections that are really not a particular concern, probably to municipalities. Um, one of the questions was, were there things that might happen in the informal sessions legislatively? There's probably a few pieces of legislation kicking around, but usually anything that's of any kind of controversial nature, so I don't think there'll be anything that would be of great concern to municipalities uh, that will come up between now and the first or the last Tuesday, in, or the first Tuesday in January before the first Wednesday when we finish our sessions. Um, and then one of the final questions was bond bills. Um, there was certainly some money identified for Reading and, and I think all three bond bills. Um, and we're at the last step of finalizing the bond bills. The bond bills have been done now. We have to do what's called the terms bill. Um, and those bills have been filed by the governor. They've been passed by the House. They've been passed by the Senate. They should be back on the governor's desk Thursday. This is the final enactment. Uh, and then hopefully we can go about working with the administration to look at when those items might be programmed, uh, if in fact they might be programmed. Obviously the administration has discretion and a lot of these bond bills, uh, and, it, it, and it's probably important to temper expectations, a lot of them are bond bills that are designed to cover a multitude of years. So it's not as if everything, you know, uh, uh, let's say it's a $2 billion bond bill is gonna come out in one year. If it's a three or five year bill, it'll be programmed in a capital spending plan over a number of years. So if we have some money identified um, for a project that is approved to go forward, um, it may be done in a manner that's programmed in a year two or year three or year four. Um, so, um, that gives us obviously an opportunity to have a dialogue with the administration, which might come first. What's um, what's the expectation? What's the program? If it's something we can convince the administration to do. So um, obviously, if there's funding that's identified in the in the operating budget, um, you know, cash is king. That's basically a cash appropriation. Anything in a bond bill is. Um, a good way of identifying it as a priority uh, and um, a way of having um, a good discussion about it. It doesn't mean that it's definitely going to happen, though. Can, can I just yeah, ask yeah, so please. it's kind of like our budget, right? So the bond bill is sort of like a capital plan. It's just in there, and then it's a question of when we prioritize it and, and when we do it. Mm -hmm. So so is being shovel ready and having a project ready to go, is that get you points on the criteria? Is it, are those, no. Or is it more kind of once it's in you just got to no, find I would, it out. I wouldn't say so Barry. I don't think it's prioritized on that level whatsoever. But it's like a Christmas wish list. You know, you've got to convince the powers to be to, right. to fund the project itself. And then it's got to come under the cap of the uh, state, which is $2.3 billion okay. cap or something. There's a cap usually percentage of the operating yeah, budget. Percentage. Um, so for us to like kind of move that along, the only thing that we can do is just um, um, pray for you guys. That's and correct. That <laughs> well, you can always pray for us. That's oh, yeah. um, I would only I would only add to that and, and, and say that I shovel ready, but I think if there's a program, sometimes if it's a matching thing, if there's a partnership, it can be the type of program. Um, it can be that if it's a program that you know is truly capital, sometimes capital money gets spent on things that are don't necessarily have a life cycle of. Um, you know, so for instance, it's, if you at a local level say we want to bond for salaries, it's not a very good budgeting right. practice. Right. Uh, and we've done it on the state level. Um, we've tried to get away from it, and, and then you try to have, if you're gonna do it, is it related to something? So some of those items. Um, one item that's not in there that, Bob, you may be aware of, obviously the, the Route 28 is up to bid now. Um, and that's about a $5 million plus dollar project, so it's up to bid when out September 15th, I think. Uh, I think they're hopefully new award contracts in this nap, uh, and then hopefully start next April. I think that's um, so, and I know that's one that's certainly my office, and I'm sure Jason's and Jim's office have gotten people who have expressed concerns driving 28, probably more in the southern portion, but um, about the condition of the road and so on and so on. So that's something that uh, is uh, beyond in the pipeline. One of the concerns also Bob had was the additional money for Chapter 90. <coughs> there is there is $40 million added 
for the supplemental budget for the chapter 90 so how much of the piece of the pie ready can get but you know, if you have some projects I think John mentioned something to me a while back about some signalization on, on Lowell Street you really should get those plans uh, finalized as soon as possible yep. Andy, if I might. Yeah, uh, yes. Right. Well, I was going to ask John if you wanted to interject about his idea. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I actually, you know, Lowell Street is Route 129. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I jumped to a conclusion that that was going to be treated the same way that Route 28 is treated. I'm not so sure that we're finding that to be true. Yeah, it's not a state road. For so that for that purpose, it's not a state road. I thought that would be a great topic for us to discuss today okay. because it's, I mean, essentially what's going on is we've got two crosswalks right now, roughly at crossing Lowell Street at Bancroft and Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the good news is we've got crosswalks. The better news is they lead from the schools and from the neighborhoods to this fabulous library right. we have. And the better news is we got lots of people wanting to use them. The scary thing is you take your life in your hands, literally, mm -hmm. across Lowell Street mm -hmm. because of the nature of the of the cut through. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've heard from several neighbors um, on that topic. And I do think that it's, you know, the idea of being able to create a signal there, <coughs> as we have done Pace, on another, Pace 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 State. Yeah, Pace State. another location that you guys helped us with. You guys have always been able to help us when we made that call, particularly around public safety that you guys could be involved in, you know. You all, you know, you gathered have, around us down at uh, 28 and Franklin Street. Do you have a specific uh, plan in mind? Yeah, I, you know, to me, that I mean, full the, the non-professional specific plan right, that's that, that I have is that we have a we put a signal there that could be activated by a pedestrian um, that either on one or both of those, um, with the idea that we could slow things down you know when it's not rush hour Lowell Street you know picks up steam and I know that you know the chief knows that um, and you know I know they do what they can do with uh, you know their their blinking signage and, and and enforcement as we're able but the reality is it becomes kind of a kind of a speedway in non rush hour time and in rush hour time it becomes bumper cars uh, so I mean the idea of a signaled crossing either one at one or both of those places especially given the amount of traffic that we have pedestrian traffic we're encouraging everybody to walk as much as they can we're trying to create a culture of walkable reading um, we've got a great library these particular places lead right there for especially I think especially about our seniors and our young people you know the young people are coming you know from schools in that direction towards the library um, we have seniors who are trying to enjoy those libraries at off hours when they're not competing with the kids and so I think that so that's I, a I have some thoughts on that but um, you know, I want to share but I just want to make sure Brad's done first maybe. no I was gonna say I, I think if the chapter 90 money is forthcoming obviously you can kind of do the math one and say we normally have a 200 million dollars so whatever percentage we get right. of the 200 is what yeah. we get of the 40 um, and obviously that's up to the town to choose how it wants to spend um, these couple intersections I would say probably you know let us go to work and maybe some alternatives that I would I would say maybe don't spend your chapter 90 on it because there yeah. may be some other things they may not be as quick it just struck me to be a great yeah. time to bring it up to yeah, you yeah, no, thanks Jim for you know bringing it up you're always kind of keep me on the straight and narrow which is great <laughs> not easy either so. um, <laughs> but it just seemed like we've been able to work with the three of you on a couple of other issues similar to this mm -hmm. you know on 20 on 129 and also on 28 and you guys rallied around us when we put that call out and it'd be great if we could do that you know one more time you know uh, kind of, yeah but, this is an accident waiting to happen we've actually had the, yeah. accidents down there you know I mean yeah, I mean a lot of kids from school not just to go to the library but to walk home right. or, or ride cross country right. um, and and so um, it, it's a major thoroughfare blocked by a, another major thoroughfare so um, yeah Senator Lewis. so um, let me first say okay. um, 
I want to thank thank you for the invitation to, to come and join you this evening. We really uh, appreciate it. It's a privilege to be part of a uh, superb um, delegation, bipartisan delegation, and to do everything we can to you know, serve the, the town and the residents. Um, you know, the relationship and the partnership between state government and our municipal governments is so important, and we can't do you know, the best job possible unless we have good dialogue and communication. So, appreciate this opportunity. We should do this on a more regular basis, I, I, I would suggest. And I think we should meet on a weekly we basis. Can wait That's what <laughs> yeah, but he said starting in January, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting in January. I think a weekly starting basis. Would yeah, once, just once we're in the view, we'll meet more often. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, starting, <laughs> starting next week. Yeah. Exactly. Many, many of us obviously talk regularly anyway, but it's, it's good to have this opportunity all together. Yeah. Um, so a couple of couple thoughts I was, was going to share based on this conversation and a few other things. So, um, you know, relative to the state budget, you know, we had some very lean years. Um, and, and that was true even after the, the Great Recession. And, um, you know, we're fortunate that most more recently, that last year and so far in this fiscal year, you know, the re receipts have been much stronger. <coughs> um, you have to remember we are at record employment levels right now in, in Massachusetts and around the country. Our economy is very strong. Mm -hmm. And so this is when you expect to have the strongest, um, you know, receipt tax receipts coming in. Mm -hmm. um, less so at the local level because property taxes are a little more less sensitive to the economy, but state revenues, you know, income taxes and sales are very sensitive to the economy. Capital gains tax is very sensitive. So my reason for bringing that up is it's good news and it's great that we have a surplus. It's a lot better than a deficit. But um, I just want to inject a note of caution. We do have to be taking a good chunk of that money, I think, and putting it aside in our state savings mm -hmm. account, which is known as the yep. Day Fund or the Stabilization yep. Fund. Just like it's important to have it at the town level, yes. it's very important to have it at the state level yep. because, unfortunately, we wish we could have this kind of an economy forever, but we know that's not the way the business cycle works. And yep. at some point, we're probably going to have another recession. And what we really don't want to do is then have to make cuts to local aid and Chapter 70 for our schools and, you know, mental health care and all of that. So right now our state's rainy day fund is a little under $2 billion, which sounds like a lot of money, but when our state budget is $40 billion, we really should have a, a larger stabilization fund than we do now. So um, the governor has made proposals for how to spend, you know, part of the surplus. He's obviously has already put aside or has proposed to put aside a significant amount in the stabilization fund, but I think that's what the <coughs> discussion is still about what should be spent now and what should be you know, set, set aside. Um, in, um, uh, the, in the budget for FY19, um, we did certainly, when we worked very hard on this with our colleagues, you know, try to make sure we're prioritizing um, accounts that really make a difference for for, the, for, for our local community. So obviously local aid, mm -hmm. uh, which we've been regularly increasing in a pretty healthy clip. Um, that's the unrestricted aid that you can use however you wish. And then also Chapter 70, um, which we have continued to, to you know, in, increase quite significantly. Um, um, that said, uh, I think we all recognize the challenges that our schools are facing. It's obviously, you know, the why you went through um, you know, uh, an override vote as uh, large, not only for the schools, but that's a big part of it. And um, we are very committed to, um, and, and this again is a very, a very bipartisan initiative on in the legislature to update the school funding formula, um, known as Chapter 70. We recognize that it doesn't um, adequately um, provide the resources that our schools need, and this is true in our, you know wealthy communities, our middle income communities, and in our less well-off communities, we're, we're underfunding really all of them. Um, the good news is that uh, that that finally has been gaining traction, and both the Senate and the House, this, legis this current legislative session, passed legislation to update the state's school funding formula. And that, that's a very big deal, because uh, it hasn't really been updated since 1993. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about this for some time. Um, but that's a big deal. Unfortunately, we were not able to reach agreement on a final bill, mm -hmm. and the reason is because it's complicated when you change the formula, and also we're talking where we basically, there's at least one to two billion dollars at stake here um, based on changes to the formula, because it, it will put in motion certain obligations that the state will then have to increase funding for our schools. 
So you got to get it right. So the, what, the reason I wanted to bring it up is to say that, and, I, and I, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm, I'm sure I can speak for, for uh, Brad and Jim as well, and maybe all, and our colleagues, is we are very committed to getting this done and to seeing that we do update that formula so it accurately reflects health care costs that our schools are incurring, special education needs, mm -hmm. technology needs, social, emotional, and mental health needs, security, all these things that our schools need that you know, weren't really issues in 1993. So I'm gonna stay focused on, you know, on trying to meet that. Um, in terms of um, a few other things, in terms of public safety, um, one thought I have, um, John, around um, some of these dangerous crossings, and you know, we we see this as an issue all over. This is a problem throughout my district. You know, the levels of traffic are, you know, a, you know just we haven't seen before. Um, the congestion. Um, it seems like everyone is, is is busier than ever, getting from point A to point B, you know, and rushing along. Also, distracted driving is a big problem. Mm -hmm. um, I would note the Senate has passed a bill to uh, not allow. You know, people to drive while texting or using their phones. Um, so we uh, we are trying to get that done. But it, distracted driving is a problem. Um, there is uh, an ability for towns to reduce the speed limit to 25. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a change in state law that gives the local option to reduce the speed limit, and I believe Melrose has done that. Um, so that is something you could look at and you know, takes enforcement. You could do that. And in terms of these dangerous crossings, one of the things we've been doing using more of are the rapid flashing beacons. Um, um, you know, you've seen them popping up in a lot of places now where basically they're solar powered, mm -hmm. which is nice. You indicate when you want to cross and uh, they're pretty bright and then they flash. Um, so um, there's a new one, for example, on the Fells Way that just went in in, in mm -hmm. Melrose. Um, I don't know if you've seen the Tri-Community Greenway and Bikeway that's being built right now. It uses several of these as well. Um, what are they called? They're I'm called sorry. rapid flashing beacons. And it's interesting, I was looking into it just recently, they cost roughly $30,000. Uh, and uh, there was actually an earmark that we secured in the budget for FY19, the delegation, for $25,000 for basically for public safety. And we left it fairly open-ended. So um, you could probably make the case that this is a public safety issue and that could potentially be a use and you know, almost covers the, the full cost. So um, they, I, I put it out there for you to think about. They do seem to be getting more traction and more popular. Um, because they are a way to make so the crossings walkers yeah, safer. Um, so um, got a walkers for flashing. flashing. You mean uh, Salem Street by the road? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, yeah, Salem Street. Yeah, yeah, the back way to Market Street. Somebody did it yesterday? It's lying on the ground. So that's yesterday. Yesterday. good news. Right at my college, she across one point five. Yeah. Yeah. And they work great yeah. because I drive through those towns a lot. Yeah, I know that um, they really stand out and, and you know, it's not thirty thousand dollars, it's not nothing, but it's, right. you know, it's not like rebuilding an intersection where you're into, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I have seen those uh, Lexington has them around there mm -hmm. kind of around their athletic center, you know, near the yeah. ballpark. Um, and because they got a million kids running around and they got a million cars, you know, zipping around. So um, they are pretty effective. I've, I've actually yeah. seen that. That's good to know that there's an earmark there. Um, excuse me, Bob, just so I have a comment on this topic. Um, naturally, since we've discovered technology that works so well, we can't use it anymore. Um, now, maybe there's different kinds of these flashes. The legislature should look into it. Uh, but we learned last week through our engineering department that the fellow who invented it pulled a patent. And since it's now patented, it's no longer MUTC compliant. So anyone that has the ones that he invented, which we have, you got a problem. Fortunately, someone them. took care of our problem yesterday. They knocked it over. <laughs> Maybe it was the guy who had the bat. Yeah. I don't know. It didn't but hit anybody. I was, hit the thing. I was surprised to learn that something that's so efficient and that you're not grandfathered. So once the, someone pulls a patent, it is no longer compliant. Somebody texting and driving. Maybe. Yeah. I was uh, just in terms of the earmark. I will say I know you guys have already submitted the paperwork. <coughs> yeah, um, we did for what your proposal was between right. the two chiefs. And, uh, yeah. Well, so. um, if I might ask a question um, earlier, Representative Jones mentioned seventy-two million for school security, and that sounded like cash in hand as opposed <coughs> to a bond bill. Um, and we have through Senator Lewis' office 
uh, surrounded three million somewhere. I don't know if it's the same seventy-two million. No. Superintendent wasn't sure about Different. that either. Different. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that was in a bond bill. Okay. So they we included in the capital facilities bond bill four million dollars authorization for oh, okay. general security improvements in town and school. Okay. That's right. So that so it's that's what Brad was talking about. That is an authorization. We've essentially said that's a priority okay. for the town of Reading. But it would then have to be prioritized by the administration and under the state's bond cap. Okay. So that's one thing. And we should talk about how we can advocate for that. Um, you know, my suggestion, what I tell my other communities, is figure out what your highest priority is. That's mm -hmm. in a bond bill. That's it. Just figure out yeah. number one thing. That's it. Okay, that's easy. And then, and then we work together to make the case to try to release. Yeah. Maybe we can't get the full four million, but we try to right. get whatever amount. And, and would that seventy-two million have any role? So that's in us? different because no. that money is. Remember, we were just talking about the surplus that's mm -hmm. yep. in the budget. So. The governor made a proposal for how to spend part of that surplus, mm -hmm. and understandably, he included in there some money for school security. So, as Brad said, it's now in the hands of the legislature, the House first, and then the but Senate essentially it's the how difference it's between cash yeah. and right. a promise, credit card, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll take both. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 just to be clear that. It's not a done deal because right. the, the governor, right. or the way the budgeting works, is the governor will make will make a proposal, but ultimately it's up to what the House and the Senate okay. want to yeah. do, and the governor then has to. But I would say that one would so. be determined yeah. within the next two, no more than three weeks, most likely. Okay. That's because we have to. That's like it. lightning. That's great. Yeah. That's good. Good. Yeah. So it's conceivable we can get pieces of funding from these different things to kind of cobble together. Um, what yes. Well, the piece that we're discussing here is near term. I mean, right. once yeah. this gets done. Then that money will be released to our cities and towns, whatever it ends up being. Yeah. But our security, ah, whatever, we're not going to spend it at all. The bond bill authorization, and that, that yeah. unfortunately, we can't really control the timing right. on that. You know, that that's, so, you know, so kind it's of, hard to, uh, yeah, the problem for you is it's hard to plan around that. Yeah. S staying on that theme of some, of some of your remarks, uh, Senator, it, you mentioned that good news, you know, that you're working on on Chapter 70 to, you know, rewrite it. That's really good news. Uh, a little disappointing you couldn't get a bill put together. Um, and, you know, I guess what I would just say on behalf of, you know, our town, um, we live with, I mean, you expressed that some of the concerns were that you'd be talking about making a commitment of a lot of money, one to two billion dollars. I understand that, you can't do that lightly, it's gotta be a negotiated deal. We live right now with unfunded mandates. Um, and you know, we gotta, I mean, we have to deal with those. We have to deal with them each and every, I mean, we have to do overrides. And our, our citizens are, you know, we were asking them for more tax money. And so what I'm urging all of you is that on a bill like uh, of that work, everybody's got to roll up their sleeves and, you know. And, well, and, and I filed a bill uh, three sessions ago. And Brad filed a bill recently also yeah. about the unfunded mandates. And any mandates coming back to cities and towns, for schools especially, yeah. and for cities and towns, they should be funded before they are mandated. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's stuck in committee right now but I mean I was on the City Council in Woburn I really I understand you feel our pain I got oh yeah very very I much so I mean I get it and I understand it and, uh, you know even for just training for uh, with the opiate situation at the high schools etc I mean all of a sudden you, the state is mandating uh, the educational system to train people right. I mean who pays for that right. where does the time come from is it on school time is it on private time so uh, I agree with you, I can feel your pain on the man unfunded yeah. mandates. It's ridiculous. Well, I mean, you know, when when you guys are, you know, we hear about people rolling their sleeves up to fix it, and, I, and honestly, that's that's really good news. Mm -hmm. It's great news. Mm -hmm. um, getting stuck because you're concerned that it's going to create a bill that you can't pay. We live with those every day. You know, I mean, so. I guess what I'm saying is arm wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Especially when you're doing let's overrides. Get, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, we all work very hard and ask our citizens to do something that was painful. Right. Um, and they responded. So, 
you know, I'm not shy about asking the, the three of you have all always worked very hard on our behalf, and I and I really do appreciate that. And you know, so that causes me to have to ask for more. Uh, so. Jason, if I could just ask a question. Um, so when when this money is it's this money is decided upon, it's it's fate, it's known. The, um, the money that's from the FY18 budget. Yeah, right? yeah. The year um, that we were right included. Um, I think we should have more of these meetings. They're very educational for me. I'm grateful to the town manager for putting forth some some good pointed questions. Um, but it will it'll greatly help the town and and educate us on how we can advocate best for our town with you. Which means so my question is what action can the select board take in uh, um, I don't know how to say this any other way, but nagging you f f to get these bond bills and stuff like that. It's advocating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that okay? It's I'm not a great politician. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's communicating. I don't think All I'm right. a politician. It's communicating, yeah. advocating I mean, I with you. I we should weigh in, but I think if you're very clear that you know uh, the, the bond authorizations that we've been able to get into legislation on your behalf, that mm -hmm. the the um, security upgrades mm -hmm. for the school in town is your top priority, then I would say probably we document that with an official letter of mm -hmm. some sort, you know, from, you know, select board. Yeah. And um, we as elected as the delegation endorse that, you know, we, we um, do that and we we work with you to make sure we get that to the right person persons in the administration. Okay. Probably the Secretary of A and F, Administration of Finance. Um, maybe one or two other people in the administration, and you know, we then work from there to make the case. Uh, all right, that that sounds great. Now, and, but I also have to say, Bob's been excellent reaching out to yeah, the delegation. Absolutely. Certainly over my f ten years, when he was the assistant town manager, yeah, with uh, Peter, I think Bob I Bob's done a great job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will advocate. He, right. He's done a great job nagging us yeah, you know, what, yeah. uh, what, yeah. what he needs. But just to be clear, at this yeah. point, this decision is not in our hands. Yeah. Understood. The decision now is in the hands of yeah. the, the governor and the right. administration. Right. But we can help you together advocate to make the case. Okay. You know why this is really needed, and you have a good plan to spend that money. So it sounds like the, this board has some work to do as far as setting our highest priorities. Well, mm -hmm. I might um, next mm -hmm. week on Wednesday, mm -hmm. the select board library trustees and school committee as well as the finance committee meet jointly um, our school committee rep had to leave um, but I know that this is higher their highest priority so all these boards will vote next Wednesday night so you have something in your yeah. hands um, you know this is what the town wants all right thanks so I think that's good maybe we document that with an official letter mm -hmm. and support it we can also then request a meeting okay with the, again with the right people in, uh, to talk further about it and I, and I know you work on that you were in Wakefield last week and because Victor saw you there also um, would it be helpful for us to try to consolidate meetings and have some kind of regional representatives and senator meetings that was my last question I don't know if that's, that's practical uh, if you have regional meetings on certain issues, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, okay. I don't know that I'd have a meeting and say this is what Reading is looking for and give somebody else an idea that they want to ask for the same thing. <laughs> right? Yeah. If there's a finite yeah, amount of resources. And well, this is just between us. <laughs> exactly. Like a secret tonight, anyway. Yeah. Right. Nobody will know yeah, about where this. Yeah, this where is there's similar common. challenges, yeah. similar you know, issues we're dealing with. Yep. I think sitting down together yep. okay. I mean, is always, I mean, you, that's why I assume you get together with your yep. peers mm -hmm. yeah. and other communities. We do the same thing, you know, with our with our colleagues as well. I think doing that together makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'll work on that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. The other thing I was going to do, if you, I don't know how much time we have, but I was, I was thought we might be interested in a few updates on other legislation. Yes. That was outside of the budget. Yeah. Okay. Is that a question? Yeah. 
Go ahead. That's just Bill. That's just Bill. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, so I did want to mention a few other things we, we did that are, I think, of, of maybe of interest. You know, we are very concerned about, uh, although notwithstanding the fact that we have a strong economy that, you know, we continue to support all sectors, um, you know, different parts of, uh, of the economy that aren't as strong as other all regions of the state. Um, uh, you know, an example is the retail sector, as you did hear about earlier, and that is a sector that is very that is challenged, and, and, and you know that has a significant impact on our downtowns mm -hmm. because our downtowns are he heavily reliant on you know on retail more than say the, the overall economy is. Yeah. And so um, there is um, uh, there was a Senate um, retail task force that, that was created this past basically last year mm -hmm. that I was I sat on. Um, we worked with a range of different um, retailers and retail experts. And if there's an interest in that, there's a uh, not a very long report. It's a quick read that was produced that um, we can get to you if you're interested. But it has some recommendations around ways to again strengthen the, that particular sector. Um, and one of the things that um, should see. Uh, significantly help is that there's been a disparity in sales tax treatment mm -hmm. because our, you know, our brick and mortar yeah, retailers right. have to pay the state sales tax and if you uh, make online purchases not not all of them but some of them you, you, know, you, you, you don't don't right. really pay sales tax so the supreme court there was a supreme court decision in the, the wayfair uh, yeah. case which is a very significant decision yeah. that came down a few months ago which basically now says that states State departments of revenue, you know, can um, require the collection of sales taxes and the remittance by those online yeah. retailers. So yeah. that is very important to help to level the playing field. Yes, right? yes. So there's other challenges they're facing, but that's one of them, and that could be addressed. So I know that uh, Massachusetts Department of Revenue is going after retailers who are out of state sell online to Massachusetts customers yeah. and don't necessarily collect from them sales tax. That's fair. Yeah, That's, uh, uh, getting that report would be, I yeah. think, helpful. So we can certainly share that. Um, the House and the Senate work together with the governor on a, on a very significant economic development bill mm -hmm. um, that we passed and the governor signed it back in August. That does um, increase, um, uh, reauthorizes funding for the Mass Works program. Um, I don't know if Reading actually has been a beneficiary of the. No, but we, we hope to be someday. Yeah, very soon. That's, that's yeah, a two years thing we now. should work on together. Yeah. Um, a number of my communities have, Malden in particular, has been the beneficiary of. And the Mass Works, if you are familiar with Malden's huge development project downtown to um, knock down the city hall, redevelop the downtown, and reopen Pleasant Street, mm -hmm. that was largely enabled by Mass Works. Um, right. And so Mass Works is a essentially uh, the, the governor took a bunch of different grant programs and, and wisely, I think, consolidated them under one umbrella. It's probably more similar to the old PWID yeah. program. Yeah. So it's and it's basically to provide you know essentially a one-stop shop for municipalities and other entities to essentially to um, uh, to support economic development where there's a sort of a public infrastructure piece to that. So we should consider where, where there's opportunities there. Um, the legislation also does does a lot of things to support workforce development. You know, one of the challenges that some of our local businesses are having, and then certainly statewide, is because employment unemployment is so low, you know, being able to recruit and retain uh, workers is a big is very challenging. So we are doing a number of things to support our technical and vocational schools, um, to provide more funding for training for un unemployed and <coughs> underemployed uh, workers and people that are more difficult to employ. Maybe they don't have the right skills. They've had some, um, you know, gaps in their employment history. Kind of trying to help more of those people, which is, is a win-win because then those people are able to have, you know, better jobs that can support them for their families, and businesses are able to get, you know, um, the workers. They need. Um, so there's there's a number of things in there. Um, there was a sales tax holiday also, which we already had. There was a um, couple tax credits, actually. One deals with apprenticeships, which is something I personally worked on as the chair of the Labor Committee. We're trying to sort of after um, you know, some of the European countries have great models for middle skills jobs. Um, yeah, or, yeah. Um, and a lot of it is built around apprenticeships. Yeah. Um, 
we do it in building trades in, in, in our country, but increasingly we're moving into doing it in healthcare, in high tech manufacturing, in even financial services. So this is a tax credit that's going to encourage more companies to bring apprentice, apprentices on board. And it's, it's another great pathway for our young people. You know, the young person, most you know, graduates of Reading High are going to go on to four-year college, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But there's you know, some number of subset of our young people that's not always the right path. So having other options, whether that's you know, community college, um, you know, going to the trades, going to the military, or going into these kinds of apprenticeship programs is really important. The, um, there's also a tax credit in there for vacant storefronts. Um, and that might might apply locally, um, and we should we can get you more information on that. But it's a, it's part of the um, economic development incentive program, the ETA program. But it's mm -hmm. essentially a tax credit that can um, help to um, you know where there are problems with um, not standing vacant storefronts. So it's, a, it's a way to help downtown. So there's a, a bunch of other things in there, but that's. Um, you know, that's pretty significant legislation that would have, yeah. it's not targeted only at obviously helping right. local downtowns, but that's a piece of it, mm -hmm. it's part of the broader. Um, police training, I wanted to bring that up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something we worked a lot on together. Finally, um, finally um, we were able to secure a, um, agree upon a sustainable funding source for police, municipal police training. Mm -hmm. um, our fire departments have been funded for years now um, with a very small assessment on property and casualty insurance insurance policies, mm -hmm. and we have really, really good fire uh, department training in Massachusetts. We have not had the same thing for municipal police. So we will now have that. It's, um, it's a, basically going to be a small assessment on rental cars, um, and that funding will now be available to expand um, municipal police training and also to reduce some of the, the burden on communities, local communities, in terms of the what you have to pay. Uh, you know, police training. So when we used to go to regional police chief meetings, that yeah. was probably the number one issue the chiefs talked about. Yeah. Whether it was middle for me, Middlesex or Essex County. Yeah, exactly. For a very long time. So that's that's a really big deal. We've been trying to create this uh, type of a, a funding stream for, for municipal training for a long time, and just getting agreement on how to do it. And, <coughs> and so we finally got there. And, um, very pleased about that. So it's, it's a win for public safety. It's also a win for municipal finance as well. Um, Great. There's significant new legislation um, on, on the opioid addiction crisis, you know, that continues to ravage Reading and all of our communities. I was thrilled to hear that Eric is going to be coming back. Yeah, uh, that's awesome news for the town that Eric will be back. So <coughs> this legislation will continue to support more treatment, um, more funding for prevention, both for our coalitions and, and for our schools, more focus on recovery. We, we increasingly understand you know, that addiction is a, is a chronic mental illness and you never, you, 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 you know, you go into lifelong recovery. Right. But we um, need support. We are trying to open a peer-to-peer um, -peer recovery center um, that would serve this whole region. And we have some additional funding in the, in the public health budget to open five new recovery centers around the state. Mm -hmm. And we're very hopeful we're going to get one of those in this area. And that's a place where those who are in recovery who are sober can go, and it's a place to get support, um, right. you know, to get job training, to get, um, you know, assistance, basically re getting them back connected into, um, you know, productive life. Okay. So that's we're excited about that. Um, also, a housing bond bill <coughs> passed. Housing is a big challenge, and um, this is going to um, provide some additional support for um, housing programs, housing tax credits, um, housing authorities, and you know, some of the things that Reading has tapped into for yeah. your local housing development, mm -hmm. and um, that, that increases the funding there. Um, automatic voter registration, we'll have that for the first time. So when people register, like my daughter just got her driver's permit at the RMV, and mm -hmm. she automatically registered. Um, so we expect hundreds of thousands more people are going to be registering to vote in the when this kicks in um, in the years to come. Um, Great. Automatic voter registration. Um, we also passed legislation dealing with uh, youth tobacco and vaping, which has been a, a very serious problem in our middle schools and our high schools. So now um, we're going to have a consistent age statewide of 21 to, to purchase tobacco products. So yep. basically what Reading has done, you yep. get a model community yep. at the curve. Now this will be true statewide. And also all um, vaping, which 
which is e cigarettes, mm -hmm. will be treated the same way as tobacco products. So, Great. in public buildings, in restaurants, in schools where you can't smoke cigarettes, you wouldn't be able to vape either. So, yeah. we know we've got a lot more work to do there around prevention and education, but that's, I think, a significant step forward. Um, so, and, and then some new um, additional veterans legislation, too. That's a high priority mm -hmm. for us. And, um, so we, each session we try to take the feedback we get from our veteran service officers and uh, other veterans groups and we try to take that and look at what we can do to can increase the support we provide to um, current service military veterans and veterans families and that's something I, think I know we're very very proud of because Massachusetts is um, almost always seen as the state that has the strongest benefits and services and supports for our veterans. Thank you. Thanks very much. Some of the highlights. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wonderful. Um, appreciate your work on the tobacco. Uh, the, I was on the Board of Health when we went through some of those changes. Yep. And uh, we felt it was uh, scientifically justified. So. Uh, and thank you because the fact that our local boards of health in Reading and Wakefield and a lot of other communities took the step mm -hmm. made it possible to do it at the state yeah. level. Yeah. Well, we had good support. Mm -hmm. Thank you. To the representative of Dwyer, who is still a representative until January, January 12th? No, it's earlier than that. Oh, it's earlier than that. You're looking for an extra week now. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Jim, thank you for your service yeah. to the Reading and your whole district. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Jim, even though you, you do live in Woburn, you still know, knew your way how to get to Reading. Yeah. I sure do. It, it really has been a, a pleasure working in Reading. And a lot of folks forget, uh, before I was a state representative, proudly representing Reading, I was actually a juvenile probation officer here for, for almost uh, four years of my life before I became a chief probation officer with the juvenile court mm -hmm. when they consolidated. So I really enjoyed my time here. I met a lot of wonderful, wonderful people in Reading, and it's a wonderful community. Um, I think it all goes back to the citizens who reside here, mm -hmm. and the leadership that the uh, select board in the past and has done. I, I have honored to, to work with so many committed people. People like Pat O'Brien was a juvenile officer. Uh, the chief prior to this chief, Jimmy, uh, oh my God, I'm here. Here. Cor here. Jimmy Cormier. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy was one of the first ones that were uh, really bugging us about the police training. So Jimmy deserves an awful lot of credit. He took the leadership on that throughout the state, as far as the police wow. chief's concerned. Wow. And I met so many, so many wonderful people here. Jack White, the ex-athletic director at Reading High School. Uh, Joe Finnegan, who we stole from your principal <laughs> in a mover. But uh, I, I really had a, a tremendous uh, opportunity to, uh, to impact a lot of young lives. And being a juvenile probation officer for 35 years, which was my passion in life. Yeah. I know how important it is to, to lead by example, set an example, uh, conduct yourself in the proper way to, to try to lead, lead, lead young people in the right direction. Because unfortunately, all too often, a lot of children that grow up, they're great kids. They just don't have what I call a quarterback on their project. Yeah. Somebody to steer them in the right way, to impact them in the right way. So, uh, Reading will always mean an awful lot to me. It really was. I have to say, I want to thank Brad Jones. Uh, Brad could not be a better colleague. Uh, he, uh, he included me into everything from day one when I got elected. Brad has a, has a wonderful family, beautiful family, and I, Reading is very, very fortunate to have uh, Brad Jones as an advocate. And he really, truly is what you call uh, a citizen soldier, so to, so to speak, in public service. Jay, thanks so much. Jay's been great. We were state representatives together. We got elected together. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciated uh, Jay's friendship over the years. But more importantly, uh, just uh, everybody in Reading, Peter Heckenblecker, Bob, thanks so much. It's been so wonderful to me and my family, especially when, when uh, we've had some uh, some health issues involved in my family. John, thanks so much for your prayers and your cards. And uh, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience for my wife and my family. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate it and was honored with, with uh, being elected uh, five times. 
and uh, I took that very, very seriously. So my heart goes out to the community of Reading, and I'll always be a piece of my heart here in Reading. So thank you very, very much. Bob said he was going to have some tappy this is your for me today. Yeah. <laughs> Mary's doing a proclamation. Um, so, so, you know, I, I just like to say something. <laughs> if I, think, I could. I think Bob will. No, that's okay. okay. I just like to say something as a point of personal privilege. You know, um, Jim, what you've done, and, and I want to say this so that people watching and people here. Well, there's people watching. Take a minute. <laughs> They're going to because they will see you. They will see you around town because you're around town. And you'll be around town long after you're not their elected official because I know that you enjoy what goes on here and I know you've made hundreds of friends in this town. Um, That's it? You know, ten you years. Are, <laughs> you are a person who has never, ever let politics get in the way of taking care of your constituents and so I that's think all three of you guys. Yeah, that's really yeah. true we have a great delegation but you know they'll be back um, well there's always an election so we don't know but um, we know you won't be back for this visit I've had the good fortune of knowing you now for almost 10 years um, and work with you for the last five and Rhett, we owe you um, and it's about you tonight um, we owe you a great deal of thanks because you've always joined with these other two, uh, risen to the occasion, cared about us, cared about everybody in this town, and you were doing it long before you were an elected official, you'll be doing it long after. So thank you very much. I thank really you, appreciate, appreciate that. Thank you very much. I had thought of doing a slideshow for tonight. <laughs> Decided not to. Oh, Some of us will understand that more. Um, <laughs> yes, indeed. I, on, behalf, <laughs> on behalf of the town of Reading, I'd like to give you our most precious gift. One of the several hundred extra. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, this commemorated our 350th anniversary. Our 375th is next year, and I understand the next book is until 400. So okay. this, is, this is what you get. Um, I wanted to do something much bigger, but in, out of respect for you, I thought this was enough. Oh, thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. <laughs> and that. the last thing I want to say is I have two daughters, and if they can ever look back at their career and be as proud as you can be, I'll be very happy. So thank I'm you. I'm sure you will, Bob. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank God for my teachers in school, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Jim, Thanks, Jim, Jim. Vanessa and I would say more, but we're sort of young pops in this organization <laughs> and, and haven't had the, the honor to, to work uh, you'll, with you. You'll do You're just saying I'm old? I, I didn't say that. I, did I say that? Very? No, I didn't. Okay, just checking. Um, Being on the select board is a very, very difficult position. I was on the Board of Selectmen, uh, Alderman and Woburn for a very short period of time. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did. We just, love it. it. I know, and that's it. You, you, you have to have a passion. Yeah. You know, but uh, politics is uh, something that, uh, and that's why it's great on a municipal level. It's municipal yeah. government. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it is. It's what yeah. we do for the benefit of the residents of, this, of our towns and our communities. We do get to meet a lot of nice people. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dan, did you want to say anything else? I have to use it. Thanks for being here for us. Two minutes recess. Thank you. Thank you.
come the judge. Here come the judge. Um, this is your last Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thanks for coming. Why don't you tell me to have an arm just before I'm supposed to start to speak? Um, oh, right. Getting worse. Senior. I'm sorry. Yeah. So. You gotta hit the view, don't you? Yeah. All right, Bob. Up next, we have this. Uh, this is this is one of my favorite uh, meetings of the year. Listening to Victor and Sharon on these topics. <laughs> totally on, totally honest. Totally honest. Place is gonna fall down. That's <laughs> right. And and I real and I want to say actually before we start all of this that Bob's task with doing all of this in our charter. This is a big task, and I recognize that. And I know he he he. Um, Always, uh, he, I know he relies a lot on the two of you. So we borrow from my field as needed. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you for having me. This is our pre-classification area. And uh, some of the pages you have in the, uh, the handout, yep. <laughs> it's relatively light on detail. And I apologize for that, but uh, there's some information that I'll need from you folks. So that I could make it the top flight presentation, the actual classification hearing we have hopefully in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Did I plant that seat appropriately? You did. Um, yes. Hmm. On the tax levy, basically we take the 2018 tax levy limit. Uh, our proposition two and a half increases the 1.6 figure there. Uh, we certified new growth at just under 840,000. Here, here. Wow. Great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, the, the Not the million I asked for. I try to cut close. That's next year. A million I'd be in DOR jail. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The, uh, the override amount, 4.15, gives us a two uh, 2019 subtotal of uh, 71 million. And then we uh, estimated the amount of the debt exclusion, mm -hmm. which is just under three million. It was an estimated levy of about seventy-three point eight million. When I take that and divide it by the total value of the town, we come up with a single estimated rate of fourteen dollars and twenty-two cents per thousand. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the <coughs> senior exemption stuff. Uh, in a few minutes, mm -hmm. but at a uh, rate of 100% match, uh, the shift component would be shifting $175,000 uh, within the commercial class of property to pay for that form of tax relief. Residential. Did I say residential? Yeah. No, you said commercial. commercial. You said I'm so used to stocking it to commercial. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I work your way stop, to stop. <laughs> Don't bring that up. Um, um, with the $175,000 uh, shift in the residential rate, mm -hmm. the residential rate would be fourteen twenty six, and the commercial, industrial, and personal rate would be fourteen twenty two. Mm -hmm. um, we have our average single family value at uh, five ninety four six. Average commercial value a little over one point six, <coughs> and the median commercial value at seven hundred and one thousand. I think it would be important to show the median because right. uh, not many properties are valued, right. you know, over a million dollars right. in the town, and most are valued at under five hundred thousand. Right. Okay. So a factor of uh, one with no tax relief factored in the estimated uh, residential tax bill would be at eighty four hundred and fifty five dollars. And the estimated, just sticking to the median, I did put the average commercial right there, but the median value would be 99.77. These next two here represent my estimate mm -hmm. of tax relief at 100% match and double. Um, to equalize the rate, uh, bring, basically bringing the uh, commercial rate up to uh, the same rate as the residential, the 1426. <coughs> it, um, it's 
Well, that reflects the split we did last year. Or is that right? No. No. That, no. I think that uh, just reflects, like, if we wanted just to equal out. This is um, a So it doesn't all fall on the residential. Last year, I tried my very best to equalize the rates, and I was unsuccessful. Yeah. So what, what ended up happening was it actually cost a little higher than this, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Two tax rates with one rate, with the commercial rate being a nickel higher. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was actually a conscious choice by the board. Right. Um, not the entire board, but that was a conscious choice. Um, well, it wasn't that you gave us a bad number. We picked the bigger one. Yeah. Uh, so, again, these are my attempts to equalize the rate as best we can. As we know, as we go through this process, as my numbers are more finalized and uh, the CFO's numbers, Sharon's numbers are uh, more finalized, the rate can change a penny either way. Um, and then down here, you see uh, at various shift intervals up to basically 1.1, what the impact would be on the tax bills. Uh, for example, if you were, if you look at, you know, a shift rate of 1.05, um, yeah, you have a higher commercial rate, low residential rate. Mm -hmm. um, you are saving a little bit on the residential side, putting some more on the commercial. But if you look at the median value, the shift of 1.05 adds uh, about $500 to the tax bill. And of uh, the total amounts of commercial properties, 83 properties are less than 500,000 in value. Uh, add another 56 to that, and that's the total amount of properties under a million in value. So if you're concerned about the effect of the small business, that hopefully gives you a better idea. And this is explained a little bit more visually in the final packet. Okay. Ask a quick question. Barry, uh, Barry sorry, I'm, I'm reading numbers. So I, I know we're going to get this in time for next week or our next presentation. But when you did the presentation last time, um, you sort of gave trends in assessed values of both residential and com and commercial. Um, and the trend line was is that the values of residential properties were rising at a much higher rate than the values of commercial yes. property. Is that continuing yes. or, or slowing down? It's continuing. It's so basically it's, we're, we're, we're moving, the, the delta is moving. Average residential increase, uh, you know, it's different for different neighborhoods and different areas. But it, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. about 6%. Average commercial increase, I think about 2 or 3%. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, Dan, I just, before you speak, I just wanted to point out something that seems a bit odd with the CIP uh, shift of, of one, in other words, an equal tax rate. Um, the, the residential tax rate is 1422, and then when you split it to, from 1.025, it goes up. It, it, but I think that's because um, that first number that you list of, of one of 14.22 really is misleading because it should be 14.26 if yes. we if we assuming we continue with the senior uh, tax relief really. mm -hmm. so uh, it just seems a bit it comes sorry. across you know wait a minute we're shifting more <coughs> why did the number go up it's be, because it, in reality yeah, I caught that earlier today okay yeah we started a base yeah. of here's what a straight rate would be right uh, here's what it would be with senior tax relief with a little bit of shift yeah uh, and it was two intervals <coughs> yeah go ahead uh, uh, sorry uh, one point I wanted to make sure I understand last year uh, Victor we shifted 181,096 for the senior relief Relief? Yes. Was no, it was double. It was double that. Double that. Yeah. Double that. yeah. Now, would, would, uh, was that split, the share of that split, 25% to residential and 75 CIP? I thought no, that was the other way down. No. Oh, 75. It, it, it was a, a little bit more than we had anticipated on to the commercial. Yeah. It was more than more of that. Yeah, that was Actually, it wasn't more than we anticipated, Victor. I mean, that was a conscious decision that got made here. Yeah. You showed us what it would oh. be precisely, to just equalize. as you always do. Yeah. Your numbers are always very precise. Right. So let me uh, continue. Uh, so that was seventy-five twenty-five. What are what is the assumption in these numbers? Is it seventy-five twenty-five fifty-fifty? Uh, the equalization <coughs> um, just progress. What does that mean? It, it would 
whatever the ratio of so CIP 92 to 8. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just like parity. Same. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he's so that's not no, doing it the way we did it last right. year. He's made no no separate yet okay. to do that. I mean, the, you that, know, that, what we, he we showed you here is very on that. Okay. Can we have both scenarios presented to us next week? Uh, parity and then 75 25 in, in terms of. I think as he gets into the senior tax relief, maybe that discussion can. Oh, okay. yes. It's that's what actually yeah, is okay. part of that right. discussion. Okay. <laughs> Jump ahead. Um, at 100% tax relief, my estimate would add about $24 to the average single family tax bill. At double the amount, it adds $42. Right. Yeah. Now, senior circuit breaker exemption notes. Uh, the assessors, uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, um, this evening I have my newest board member, <coughs> Brendan. Hmm. Zarechian? Yep. Zarechian. Nailed it. I've been practicing all day. Uh, thank you for taking we, the time. We did a know. national search for him, I want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> My other two members are traveling for business, so unfortunately they couldn't be here, but I think they'll be here for the big show. Uh, the assessors, we do a uh, presentation at the Senior Center, um, articles in the local newspaper. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a notice went out in tax bills uh, that would be payable August 1st to remind taxpayers of this benefit. Um, 2018, 194 applications, 183 were granted. Those that were, uh, did not qualify were because of the ownership of the home. Uh, if it's in a trust that's not a life estate, they don't qualify. Uh, for 2019, 177 people applied and 175 were qualified. Hmm. Of those, 114 people are repeat filers. Is that higher or lower than you expected? Yeah. I, it's the first year I, yeah. I okay. um, 69 people did not file again for, 2008, for 2019. Uh, eight of those were due to trust, so that real number is 51 people uh, did not apply. 59 new people filed for 2019. Uh, and of those previous filers, nine people will be receiving less of a circuit breaker credit, while 13 people received more. And at the bottom, at 100% reimbursement, it's a little over 175,000. Uh, last year, the number was 181. If you double it, it's going to be double that. Victor, can I ask you a quick question on, um, I understand why nine previous filers receive less of a CB credit, circuit break credit. Can you explain to me why 13 received more or you would receive more? Um, maybe their income went down, oh. making them eligible for a higher credit. Uh huh. Okay. And this, this all makes assumes, sense. let's say, a factor of 1.0 in both years, just for comparison's sake. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's not comparing double last year with something else this year. Right, no, no, apples and apples. Yeah. I, I get it, just that, that makes total sense. Thanks for the explanation, Barry. So in these numbers, there's one thing, there's one thing that's incredibly pleasing to me and one thing that's a little disconcerting. The thing that's pleasing to me is that 59 new people applied. That was my expectation, that once the word of this project, that this was out there, seniors don't trust a lot at first, they need to kind of test the waters. I, I in, in my heart of hearts, I anticipated a lot more people coming in the door to try to file. It's um, interesting, it's in kind of equilibrium with the ones that didn't file. So and then this, we're and the, steady state. the 69 yeah. people that didn't file, let's call them 61. Right. Right, so what I'd like to do is try to drill down into, in, uh, into why that might be. I, one, one reason that I, or theory that I have, um, and I just want to run it by you because you're on the ground, is that they didn't file again because they didn't get the circuit breaker. And they didn't get the circuit breaker because maybe we gave them too much money last time. Bill's nodding his head. Um, and that they didn't now qualify for the circuit breaker, therefore they couldn't file. And that was something that I know that came up when we did this deliberation last mm -hmm. time well, it, about whether about whether or not um, you know were we doing 
you know, by trying to be generous, and basically we were trying to be generous and trying to do the right thing and try to get as much money into people's hands as we could, that the adverse effect didn't kick in, and that maybe we disqualified some people from getting because that counts that that rebate that they get or that subsidy counts as income, which may then kick them out of the program. Is there any either anecdotal or empirical evidence that you have that could support or that or, or just <coughs> yeah? Can you model that yeah. anyway? Uh, Without actually calling sixty nine people right. on the phone. Yeah. He, he, well, 61. 61. 61. I, I do have a let, question. Let, let, that, just let, let him answer answer really quick, and then I'll uh, okay. agree to you. My, my best guess, given that we did the same level of outreach through the same uh, avenues available to us, uh, with the exception of those folks that may have passed away given the population, yeah. uh, <coughs> And even throw in a few that simply may have forgotten. Uh -huh. I gotta think a majority, uh, and this is only me speculating because I've been dealing with this population and, and dealing with the implementation of this, uh, is that a majority were unable to file because they did not receive the uh, circuit breaker. And my concerns, as I would illustrate, are for those folks that did not get the exemption, this year, their tax bill mm -hmm. is going to be wildly uneven. Oh, yeah. While the town endeavors to put a portion of <coughs> the uh, uh, override on the preliminary tax bills, mm -hmm. these folks had a $2,000 benefit built into their fiscal 18 bill. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that is built into the fiscal 19 preliminary tax bill. Oh, boy. Okay. So, yeah. so yeah. we put the override on top of it. Now the actual tax bill comes out. It's $2,000 higher. So it could be a $4,000 swing for somebody. They're going to get socked in per year. Okay. John. So a couple oh, questions, Victor. One, of the 61, yeah. I'm sure that we could ascertain with relative ease, how many of those people have <coughs> home? Because some of them have. How many people, I'm sorry? Have sold their homes. Sold their homes. Okay. And I, because I know some of them who filed have sold their homes. I know them. Um, so there's some of that. Um, I'm, it's certainly a distinct possibility that some of those have passed away. And I, and I think that may or may not have cleared probate, therefore it may or may not have cleared ownership change, but I mean, we could figure some of that out. Um, is it fair to say that, um, and I know we talked about this last year, that it's kind of your damned if you do and damned if you don't. I mean, if you give them, if you <coughs> offer more relief, and therefore create actual, you know, phantom income, if you will, through a tax reduction, um, causing them in the ensuing year not to be able to reap the benefits of the circuit breaker. Um, it really gets down to fungible dollars, and when do you want them? Do you want them in advance, or do you want them in arrears? Because you really haven't taken anything away. You've advanced tax savings in one year, um, through the generosity, which is then, in, and they received their circuit breaker, which then is causing a different problem this year. So, I mean, I think that what we have to start to examine is do we have the right criteria for qualification? And I know that in the beginning, part of what we did with using the circuit breaker was to use that because we didn't have to invent something, number one, and we didn't have to staff it, number two. We didn't have to implement a local means test Correct. in Sudbury, which right. in my estimation of most assessors is an aberration. I, I, got, I get that. So I guess my question to you is, um, I don't think we should stop trying to help, but we need to maybe, is there a way we can start to rethink the qualifying Gate. Uh, you know, how do you get through the gate and keep your circuit breaker? Is there another method for that? Because, you know, otherwise we will be chasing our tail on this forever. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I can go ahead. It's a part of yeah. that. Um, you know, we got a three-year enactment of this program. So Correct. if you want to change it, you have to go through a home rule petition. I, in town I understand that. 
Uh, but we're two years into it now. This is the second year. So yeah. if you wanted to do it for next year, April is when we'd have to start, mm -hmm. go through town meeting. Right. Um, we didn't ask our legislators, but as, as Victor knows, uh, there is a uh, movement afoot to make a statewide um, program. Mm -hmm. So we suspect, one never knows, but we suspect by the time ours expires that probably will be a state option. If not, maybe it's one year behind that. Um, so given that, we think that uh, the DOR and the legislature are going to look very carefully at any proposals from anyone and knowing there's a statewide <coughs> one going to roll out. That's yeah. I don't know what the Well, you know, maybe the simple like. answer is, and I know, Victor, they're going to come to you as they're looking to build, to build this legislation. You know, you're one of the pioneers that's put this together. And there's no two ways around that. And I, and I genuinely appreciate that. And I know many seniors in this town, whether they realize who to thank. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. Everything's a team effort. No, it is. And I, I, it is, but somebody's got somebody's to lead it. And you've done that, which makes me think that when it comes time, and I, and I know that at the time we marched through, uh, there were legislators that looked at this and went, this is a pretty good idea, you know? And, and, and there, uh, there's a move afoot now to help seniors statewide. <laughs> I would urge you, maybe that's the way the solution comes, is that, you, you know, you let them know, we got a problem. This is a good program, we got a little problem with it. Here's the problem. They can fix that. I think you notice how friendly I was, in particular with Senator Lewis and <laughs> the other two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good, uh, yeah. When yeah. they hire you yeah. as a consultant, we expect a <laughs> cut. Well, that, that may be fixed. I mean, you know what? I, I get that there's challenges with this thing. It's not perfect. As a group, uh, our assessing uh, folks are looking at a couple of different proposals. Uh, I have a couple that I favor, and uh, we hope to hand our legislative delegation a bill to be filed sometime in December. Great, great. That's awesome. All right, we, let's bring this back um, to, to I think, the question at hand. Vanessa wanted to ask a question. I did. I mean, make a statement and then... Given what's happening with the state um, and the fact they're considering this, for broader application, I would suggest we table the criteria discussion um, because I would hate for us to spend um, a significant amount of time to then have the state yeah. force us to change yeah. it. Um, so that's one item. As far as the amount <coughs> that we consider, it was at 200% last year, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. two right. and a half. So, Bob, are you saying that any changes we make if we were to decrease the amount, is that something that requires broader approval, or is that strictly under the purview of the board? Yeah, um, your um, your so. rules are between 0.5 and 2.0. So it's up to us. That's yeah. just your the, the enabling article allows okay. that mess. So last year we went to the 2.0. Yeah. Um, so and I and I remember that conversation, um, and I remember Victor's cautioning about the fact that there might be unintended mm -hmm. consequences, which I think, given the numbers that he's placed here of the 61 people that have taken into consideration a handful of people who for various reasons as John stated may have fallen off we're still looking at a lot of people who may really be damaged um, by this um, effort at the 200 percent so as we talk about the tax classification Victor what do you need a number from us is that correct uh, well the biggest thing I need to is have a sense of where this board intends to go with some new tax relief. Yeah. There we are a lot of calculations. We could do that down yeah. to, yeah, we you know, uh, arriving at a shift fact. I tell a story about last year, <coughs> an hour and a half discussing a shift fact of 1.0. All right, zero. we don't need to relive that. That wasn't Thank ready. you. It was. It was in, yeah. Okay, no, okay moving out. on, continuing. <laughs> um, it, it's it's a lot to you know split the baby that fine. Yeah, we, we're not. Gonna, I, I I hope we don't do that again this year. Um, we do need to decide to decide on the, the zero point to point five to to two. The the one question that I had uh, from you when you know we talk about um, uh, there's two big questions I have and. and um, one was mentioned by Barry, and it's very disturbing, but we'll get on to that in a minute. Um, the 61 people who 
didn't reapply for some reason. Maybe some sold their homes, some passed away. Um, the this statistic: nine previous files uh, filers received less of a CB credit. Uh, Thirteen received more. Does that include the entire um, FY 2018 uh, 183? <coughs> um, that's the comparison from 18 to 19 filers, yes. From eight, eight to 18 to 19. That were approved. No, the, the, it says, so 183 were, grant, were approved in, in 2018. Yep. Is this number, nine of those received less of a, uh, a circuit breaker, 13 received more. Is that, um, does that, ref, is that, a number pinned to this 183 from 2018. Do you, you know what I'm asking? Of the, well, take it this way. Yeah. Of the 175 that applied, 114 were previous filers. Yeah. So those numbers of the nine and the 13 are from those 114 previous filers. And the way I know this is when the application comes in, we record the amount of this circuit breaker. Yeah. Whatever they receive for a credit <coughs> from the state. Yeah. Because whatever we do is going to be a derivative of that. Right. So, so I'm, I'm still st st still unclear. Can I? Yes. I think I know where you're going with this. Okay. Um, I think the answer to your question is yes, they're included because anyone who. The, of the 69 people, those mm -hmm. are the ones you're concerned about, essentially, mm -hmm. they, we wouldn't know whether or not they qualified, or we wouldn't know whether or not their circuit breaker was decreased because they're no longer eligible for this. So he wouldn't, Victor wouldn't have received an application for them. So, so, yes. so those, this does reflect the 2018. <laughs> comparison from 18 to 19 of those that refiled. Again, the 114 people that we have data on for the two years. Oh, I get, okay, I got it, I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, now, when you, the other question I had is, Bill Brown, um, very, um, as his nature, very quietly uh, brought this up with, to me that um, you can take a hit on your circuit breaker, but the net between the circuit breaker and the uh, tax break. You, there's a net win there. Is that correct? You win. I'm, I'm one of the nine. Yeah, yeah. So you still <coughs> came out ahead, yeah. but just not as ahead right. as if, if the other. If the two, I mm -hmm. would be up. Okay. And then the question is, of the 59 new people, yeah. how many will get knocked out next year if, you know, we, I mean, I mean, when we, I guess when we do a program, we want, we want that benefit to be as long lasting right. um, to the people who apply so that they could at least count on it. Now, obviously, their income is going to change. Yeah. Our revenue, our ability to do the revenue is going to change. But within the four corners, it's something that we want them to rely on. The worst thing that we could do is give them, is give people something. Yeah. And then it's not, and then they, they're in their mind, they're spending that money next year, and now they don't get, not only don't they get it, they lose it on this, they lose the state rebate that they had as well, not just the local one. And now we've sort of put them in. So, and trying they're to not keep eligible it, for hours as right. well. Right. So, try, I mean, well, let, our goal should try to be keep it even as much as we can. Look at, look at the, the, there's two sides to this, and maybe it suggests a compromise. Yeah. Uh, the 114 who are repeat filers. If we cut that back to 100%, they're going to lose something like $1,000 each. So maybe we compromise to something like 150 this year. Uh, and you can't lose sight of what Bill has just said. Bill is one of the nine that got less. Yep. Right. But his net is more. Right. And, you know, and I think that was the point I was trying to make right. earlier. And it was in advance. Money in advance is always better than money in arrears. Yeah. I mean, so... It is an imperfect system. I will yep. definitely yep. agree with that. It's a balance here where you can protect as many of the people that we were trying to protect from the very beginning yep. we need to look at. And I'm not exactly sure if there's a calculus that allows us to do that. I, I think if there was, Victor would be showing it to us. I mean, yep. I think it's just really tough. It's a you're taking kind of a swag at this thing. You'd have to Try do a regression analysis on all those 
right. because tax free. So, well, we so, really don't. Yeah. So, so, so in order, in order to be able to answer the question, oh, exactly. slow down, slow down. Slow down. Sorry. We don't know the individual data. Slow down. Exactly. People's Van specific. Vanessa wanted to say something, and then so, I'd like to sort of. Thank you. So, yeah. as as far, I mean, this is really this is the pre-tax uh, or the preview tax classification. So, Victor, if I heard you correctly, you need to have an idea of where we're headed with this <coughs> senior tax relief amount, so that then you can present something for us. Right at our next meeting. So Dan put forward the idea of the one, the 150%. Yep. Yep. Um, what does the board think of that? Um, can I say yeah, something yeah. and then, then we'll, we'll revisit that. Um, does the board, is the, is the, board, the sense of the board that it's really impo it's impossible to predict the future on these things. It's an Pretty imperfect much. system, right. but it, overall, it helps more people, uh, and, and it's a good thing. So, so. Um, well, I don't think absolutely. We, I don't think we want, anybody wants to do away with this. I mean, right. we're all no, 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 right. right. Good but, program. but. Um, but we're obligated to do at least fifty. Yeah, we're ob obligated to do at least fifty. Can't do zero. But it, you know, as you say, if you help people more. At the higher at the higher level, um, you can help more people. You can help fewer people with a bigger yeah, right. with a bigger that's subsidy. Right. That's right. Or you help more people, and everything gets a little bit less. That's so right. That's, that's where you want to you want to help more, yeah. or you want to give more to few, a few. That's how you think about it. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. We well, have a question. Have a question. So back to to. We should probably. That, oh, question. My name's Norma Strachan. Hi, Norma. I actually did my <laughs> master's paper around this. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, great. So where were you like a year ago? <laughs> <laughs> Working on a master's paper a year ago. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> when we were establishing, we were establishing this. But my question is, um, and Victor, you might be able to answer this. If you just match 100 percent, maybe you can't answer this. Would, and I think more people would qualify for it yearly or not necessarily. Like, we lost so many people in well, because it was 200%, I'm not really sure. So if you went to the 100% match. Even at 100%, you run the risk of losing some people because there are some people that are on that edge when right. they qualify. I, I, but you can't figure out. I, I wish. That would be. I wish last year was at 100%, so we have quantifiable data going forward. It's like instead of stopping, instead of starting at the bottom of the ladder, we went to the top. And every subsequent year, yeah. it's going to be trying to figure out, you know, <coughs> yeah. And I, I do think our intention was good. When yes, we there's no that. So, so going back to Vanessa's question. So, you know, Dan put forward the idea of the 150 um, percent. You know, is the board can the board agree that that's a you know what's the feel of the board as far as decreasing the percentage amount um, so that hopefully for the net fault year that follows we have more people that qualify and we don't risk having this these people that have now become uh, unqualified for the circuit breaker at the state level. If you as put well that into a motion, then we can start discussing it. Well, do, uh, so, so moved. <laughs> thank you. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> um, discussion on the 1.5 or 150 percent. So is that where you are, 150 or at 100, which is what Victor is demonstrating as 100? No, 1.5. I, one, one, one I, I think, think 1.5 because, you know, I, I don't want to go from one extreme to the other. I think that's right. jarring. Right. Um, for some people, and it makes it um, unpredictable for people's financial planning. I think 150 um, still helps these people that have applied um, and does the least amount of, um, uh, provides some amount of stability or predictability for people going forward. I, I, I don't want to fluctuate wildly. I feel like 150 is a reasonable compromise, as Dan suggested. The, um, I think that the, the variable, I, I understand what, exactly what you're trying to do. Um, I think it's totally unpredictable yeah. to be able to figure out what's going to happen given the variables that we're talking about. Yeah. The only way to do it, I mean, the only way to really do it is to, you know, sit down with um, 160 people and do a tax analysis. Yeah. I mean, th that that would tell you. Um, I mean, uh, we're not going to do that. I mean, part of what we tried to do here was build something that was not going to cause cost us money beyond the, you know, 
the repositioning of the tax money. So how do you feel about the one point five? I'm, I'm okay with making a change. I mean, we realized that some number of those 61 went away right. yeah. because we helped them too much. They might have had a net gain early, yeah. and, and I get that most people budget. They don't think about the time value of the money, and if yeah. I got it now, particularly people that might be, you know, desperately trying to qualify for this so I, I, I kind of get that yep so I'm you know I'm personally open to an adjustment and see what happens um, is the one five except like would you um, that well you know adjustment? Victor's suggesting one um, which is I think that's what you got up there right I have one and yeah, two, but not knowing right if it lands in the middle whatever I, yeah. As long as I have direction from the board, I can okay. work with it. It, it. it may show us a better or worse number, and we don't know. Right. We, we, we have we literally have no way of knowing, um, given the variables that are involved. But I'm certainly open to you know, making the adjustment as long as we don't create a culture shock. If you remember, part of the reason that we went from a smaller number to a bigger number was our concern that... <clears throat> As we knew an override was something that we were going to put forward, we hoped, you know, fervently that it would pass. Yep. Yep. All of that happened, and part of the rationale of the board a year ago was to, you know, create more, you know, yep. more space. So <coughs> making it smaller is okay with me. I mean, I'm not going to vote against that. I yep. mean, there was a reason why we did what we did last year. We exactly. see some of the results of that. Victor cautioned us that that could be a could be a problem i'm sure that part of this is that problem and i'm not sure that going to one and a half or one is even going to solve it but i think it's an imperfect yeah. it's the flaw in our system but you're open to i am absolutely okay. very so last year i was adamantly for one um, and when it came up for reconsideration i was adamantly for one <laughs> specifically because i knew that this was going to happen, that there was going to be a large number. I didn't, you know, again, we don't know exactly, but 60 is a lot of people who we give something and then we take it away. Um, so I would like to be at a one this time, but would do, by doing that, I'd be, I'd be voting for the thing that I didn't want to have happen last time, which is that basically we give something and we take it away. So if one and a half is the is the, you know I, I'll support that um, you know kind of begrudgingly um, because I think that it'll keep it'll keep more people in the program than than two would yes and it would give a little bit more than one um, but you know so yes I'd support it thank you Dan you proposed it I agree <laughs> <laughs> great um, well, all the above then. Um, Let's vote on this. Okay. Unanimity is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, all in favor of the 1.5 or was one? Most of the yeah. 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 second it? Yeah. yeah. And second it? Um, Dan second. Yeah. And that's who made the motion. Dan second it. Yeah. So all in favor of uh, the motion. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome, Bill. We did it all for you. So, so Victor, do you need? So that's the. Um, senior tax really what more do you need from us leading into the next one a wish list would be if you want to split the tax rate just a little bit to avoid every year having to calculate the splitting of the baby and the tax relief and everything like that but you don't have to do that tonight I can build that into my calculation so you all can duke it out what is what is it you're asking for actually when you say that I mean what, please be your, more specific what's your net what's the number so that you don't have to go through this painful calculation every year uh, I mean if you you could either equalizing the rate is a little bit imperfect because again mm -hmm. the, the, the tax rate setting process all it has to do is change a penny either way and there goes our grant plan to equalize the rate if you were to adopt the check the tax shift of 1.05 onto the commercial uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, it we wouldn't have to talk about a tax shift or trying to equalize rates for many years so this year it's 1.04048 Oh, 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 oh,
So, so you were asking, year, you're recommending a, 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 one, a 1. 1.00. 1. 1.05, which would. 1.05. Uh, that would raise taxes the, on the median CIP property uh, over 500 yeah. per year. Five split years. 10 times the size of the one that we Five percent. Yeah. yeah. So I, essentially what you're saying, just yeah. so you're clear on those numbers. Yeah. So it's 10 times. Well, only reducing the uh, residential by something like 12 <clears throat> bucks. So it didn't look, uh, just take that. Yeah. That's okay. <coughs> oh, me. Oh, yeah, Barry, I'm okay. sorry. Um, so last year we looked at sort of, of if we did nothing to the rate, right? Basically, the, the, the residential property tax rate would be higher than the commercial tax rate. Yeah. And, and I think we all agreed that that was sort of unpalatable, especially going into an override. Yep. Yeah. Especially when residential assessments were rising at a much faster level than commercial. Yes. So we did the, we did this, I guess you call the splitting of the baby, the one point, right. to basically equalize the rate, even though, because technically we had to, it all has to fall on the residential, the senior tax relief, but so by equalizing the rate just that eensy, eensy bit. Well, technically it is falling on the residential. Right, but, but we always have the option. Right, but we're we're, we're 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 equalizing it out with that very very <coughs> small. Uh, so what? You, so are you suggesting the one point oh five to avoid that, or just the one point oh five as a start point? I, I'm just trying to understand. You won't what have you're to do the to calculation do. for years to come. Yeah. yeah, you'll never have to worry about it really, given the foreseeable future, with the exception of recent condo owners who will pass that ten year threshold and some of the new condo developments, uh, we're gonna be relatively steady until we start hitting that 10 year threshold with those new developments, which means those <coughs> new renting residents will be able to apply the circuit breaker credit. So we'll be in a position, we'll be comfortable now, and we never have to really look at splitting anything until many years down the road when all those complexes come okay. online. So you're look so you're su so you're suggesting the 1.05 not as a philosophical thing about what tax rate should be but just as a way to kind of help us navigate through senior tax relief for the next few years. I just want to am I understanding that? I mean correct? you okay. can make a 1.02. We probably won't get there for a while. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I think 5 is way too high. I can't support five. Uh, sorry. I think, I think Victor's main point, whatever the number is, is do you want to have this precise discussion every year, mm -hmm. or do you want to run down the path a bit mm -hmm. and say let's let things play out for a while? Right. Are well, I would accept for the points that Lisa raised yeah. earlier. I mean, this is not the year to a big jump like this. Yeah, yeah absolutely I, not a year to do. Many it. years ago, we had a an ad hoc classification, our tax rate committee. I yep, was the staff I person. I know. Um, the data in Reading and, and heavily residential um, property communities is very clear that over the long run, residential property assessed value appreciates faster. Mm -hmm. Right. There's occasional blips <coughs> to that, absolutely. And if you're going to build a lot of commercial, the class may change, but that doesn't change the assessed value of what's there. So that pressure, if you will, is almost a reverse split in the long run. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And so which, in a higher I, number. That's that's the way. I don't know that. I think I take issue with that no, definition. No, which is exactly. There was a reverse fifty years ago around 2000, which mm -hmm. is why late great Man Menino at the time approached the legislature with the ability for cities and towns to shift beyond their maximum capacity. Mm -hmm. For example, in Wakefield, we shifted to 1.75. <coughs> we went to 200 mm -hmm. percent to mm -hmm. mitigate some of that shift, that reverse shift. Because residential property explosive growth, commercial property flat. Right. The deal was you yeah. do it for five years, then you go back to 170. They said, no, Tommy will take care of it. We never saw 170 went back. <laughs> yeah. Victor. Um, so the, uh, the question is really whether you set a rate that's a little higher than the math would suggest today, so you yeah. don't have to do this every year. That's really a little higher. I, I, I get that, Victor. Yeah. And we that, did that last year. Just, 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 just a second. Mm -hmm. um, I think Look that at the numbers. I th um, and I think that's a good idea and of course the job of this board is to figure out what that number is mm -hmm. so we don't have a the, the tax uh, this split tax small split tax um, is is not a bouncing ball uh, through time and uh, is un sort of unpredictable for businesses and residences alike um, that said 
the, the businesses, and I argued strenuously for a larger <coughs> split rate last year, just because of what you and Bob summarized, and the residential values versus CIP. Um, and I, I still feel that way in the future, but given what's happening um, at the state level for small businesses, uh, you know, this year, I think we want to tread lightly. So, yes, I agree. Vanessa. So I actually met with um, several small business owners mm -hmm. in town um, to get the perspective on what's happening in the state and to talk about the school tax rate. And what I learned is that there's actually um, other ways. So the, the split tax rate tends to get a lot of the attention for the, for the small businesses. Um, but there's actually other ways that the town can help support the small businesses. Um, I'm yeah. still t talking through with them to see how we can put those forward into concrete ideas. Um, so at this stage, I, given what's happening with the state and the issues that they raised, I would hesitate to have too much of a big split tax at this point. Um, but to Victor's point, I think going through this exercise every year um, it seems excessive to me to ask our uh, a staff person to, to do this for us. It's, believe me, I'm not phrasing it as a complaint. No, not, not and I it's not it's taken that way. It's judicious and warranted <laughs> to have some stability here within the yeah. tax base to alleviate what could be swings a few cents either way but it adds up right so i i would suggest so so victor you had suggested the 1.05 make it 1.02 whatever right you, and so i think to, to lend the stability that the difference in taxes v victor is suggesting mm -hmm. um perhaps we can you know, split the difference, same as we did a seizure tax rate relief, and go for the 1.02. Yeah, are we doing, I, I'm, I'm confused. Are we doing classification right now? I thought we were waiting no, for just, two weeks. We're just, we're just giving him guidance. We're trying to give him a pre, a pre discussion. Right. So, so basically, that would be, then, for just a yeah. second, that, that, be be that would be a, a uh, from 4 point, uh, from 0 0.048, to 1.02, my math is correct. That's around a fourfold increase, and and is that correct? Yeah, the difference that? on the median CIP property. Yeah, I noted that. Bucks. Two percent, yes. right. right? And with 83 properties being less than five hundred thousand dollars in value, yeah, mm -hmm. you're looking at a tax increase of what? Less than what the average home would be because right. the average home right. is six hundred thousand. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so, if I'd like us to give Victor um, s some range, range or direction. Range would be beautiful. Right. I can work with the range, and then, like yeah. Like I said, you can do get up. So we've all spoken to this. I, I don't want to belabor it. Does someone want to make a proposal of a range for us to look at? Uh, I, uh, would pro uh, I would propose a range of 1.01 to 1.03. Okay. Make it 1 to 1.03. 1 to 1.03. I'd like to make it 1 to 1.1. I mean, I mean at that point range. we're splitting hairs, though. No, we're not. I mean, no, one at a time. One at a time. One So, huge. Barry, could you repeat yourself? I'd, I'd want to look at the numbers from from a factor of one to one point one. Hmm? I'm Andy. Hey, John, I believe that the number that, that would bring parity at one hundred and fifty percent <laughs> would be one point. Cool. Is would be one zero zero three seven five something like that. Yeah. Okay, because one point zero zero two five would be at one. One point zero zero five zero would be at two. So let's split that difference and let that be the low. Because philosophically speaking, what I think we should be doing is maintaining parity between the two. And that's just my opinion, and I know I'm only one person. So I would offer that that would be the low, which would cause parity to happen, based yeah, well, on what I saw up there tonight. We'll see with the, um, 
pardon me for a moment, um, with the guidance of 1.5%, I'll have a parity number in there. If we start, if you want to go 1 to 1.1, 1, 1 to 1.03, you'll have the a parity easiest number. part is I'll have the parity <coughs> split number in there. Yeah, and you'll have the, it'll be 75-25. No, no, no. We didn't you want a ceiling, you don't want a range. I think he wants both. I think the range is more important. Yeah, the, the range that we're looking Well, the range is parity to X, whatever X is. I, 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 right. Yeah, John, I hear you. I think there's value in in showing the public um, anyway. what it would look like if we did nothing. It's no, more, kept it no less math intensive right. for me to go from 1 to 1.02 mm -hmm. as it is from 1 to 1.1. 1 .1. I can okay. show all those numbers easily. Okay. So the, and the second includes the first. So yes. Yeah, I'm one to one point oh two. Parity at hundred. But it's just a streaming number after that. You're going to put a formula in. It's going to stream yeah, it out. Exactly. Yeah. But it, know, it does. There's no extra math. It does show the range. Okay. So um, so so. Um, going. So the proposal is what. So, so the the last proposal was what Barry put on the table, which was one to one, uh, which one includes to, everything, which includes everything. Well, which is, then it goes to one point five fractions. Um, well, six. I thought you said one to one point one. Right. No, no, but I'm saying so. It doesn't include everything that's on this list. It, it, it cuts it off at right. It cuts it off at one point one. Yeah. So, so um, you want to make a motion from uh, for one to one point. Uh, to, yes. Dave. Could I also ask that this, because I did this myself in a spreadsheet, uh, if you show the uh, percent increase over the factor of one for each of these choices for the particular category in this column next. That's what I did. Yeah, okay. That helps. Barry. Also, um, Victor, what I thought you did last year was really useful in that you sort of you gave us, um, and it, you know, I guess we can go back to the old ones, but if, if you have new, new examples, you took a a sampling of different commercial properties at various assessed values yeah. and then gave us what the tax bill would be on those properties. Um, As can you shall receive. Okay, ah. so obviously from a very small commercial property to like the home, you know, to the, to the Home Depot and the market basket. So I think it's important if we are going to have a public hearing that public gets to see you know what the average tax bill is going to be for those various properties and um, at those various at those various rates right because um, that's 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 real you don't have to do a residential because everybody know, you know it's just yeah. it's one calculation right so so Barry that would include small businesses yeah on the com on the commercial on the yeah, commercial, on the commercial right yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so um, to state the obvious so did you make a motion uh, I will make a motion that we, Victor gives us numbers that range from 1 to 1.1 1 .1, um, and the different, what, what that would mean for the different residential tax rates, the commercial rates, um, mm -hmm. the rates, and then also the, um, the, 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 right, the bill impact on that. On the on third and fourth bill, are you going to focus on that because that's what's going no, on? No, I'm going to do taxes. Okay, because we're, we're just realize that's another factor. Uh, yeah. yeah, but if we're going to have a hearing and we're yes. going to, I want to look at, I want to look at all well, the data. Too and then, it, well, yeah. it's going to be less complicated what's on there and what's less complicated than last year. <coughs> we went all the way to one point five. The same format I always do. Okay. That yeah. board seems to appreciate why it can. And it was helpful. So. And there'll be a parity number in there like you did last year. And I get, and I get that. Does, well, well, actually, I, I'm, I'm remiss. Does someone want a second Barry's proposal? Second. Okay, discussion. I'm pretty sure we've put the entire town to sleep. Yes, this. yes. Um, okay, all in favor? One last twist. Oh. You have to wait until after that? No, this part's fine. This is separate. Um, what kind of preparation do you want them to do to take up Dan's possible suggestion of leaving revenue on the table for this tax year? Oh, because he's going to have to factor that into yeah. In other words, revenue projection. Do you want to reduce the uh, tax level? <laughs> levy? Not 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 an underride, but actually taking less taking less levy under that cap. Yeah. 
Any or kind of the alternative is to take the full thing and put the rest into now it. Now you're talking about some math. Yeah. Uh, Any I, kind of guidance uh, would yeah, be helpful. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, th I thought the board, uh, the feeling of the board, correct me if I'm wrong, but was that to explore the idea of um, um, what is it? De dedicating that money to the fire, fire, fire department. Uh, maybe for specific, you want to make it public safety or the fire department? Uh, uh, public safety, I think, is a you want Well, I, I'll tell you, Bill strongly argued for the fire department. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Bill's not the sixth selectman, I want to make it clear. But, <laughs> sure, yes. Uh, but, but he does have a lot of experience in town. Um, but I'm open. That's open for discussion. Yeah, I mean, the, the more the more the more flexibility we have, the better. So okay. I, I would, if it's going to be wording, I'd offer public safety. Okay, John. Just a word okay, of caution. I, I think we need to be clear, based on the way that we wrote the override. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's oh God, that's the it. only, and I'm not trying to yep, nip the you know. but I do think it's important for us to have that clarity. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank if you. We're then good to go with public safety or yeah. within the framework of fire only. Okay. Great. Yeah, John. So, thank you for the reminder. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so for those who yes, are still awake and following, um, Bob, do you mind refreshing on the FEMA grant that we're talking about? The amount we're talking about. Um, the town received approximately a six hundred thousand dollar grant spread over three years. Um, as far as we know, the three years begin when we start hiring four firefighters, which let's just say for simplicity's sake is January first. <coughs> um, there's more grants in the first two years, less in the third year, and none in the fourth year. Okay. So uh, there'll be some number of more than a hundred thousand dollars and less than a hundred and fifty in the first year if we start in January. It's a little less if we start. <coughs> Uh, a full year would be over 200,000 in the first two years. And then in the third year, it's less than half of whatever that full year is, and that goes away. So you're talking about probably um, 600,000 spread over, at this point, four fiscal years. Right. Because you're going to do a half year this year, right. two full years, and then a half year. Yeah. So, Dan, 600,000. Uh, Dan, Dan and then we'll come back to you. Uh, stabilization funds, Bob. Uh, it, what restrictions exist? And my memory is a little fuzzy. Is it operational only? Is it I think can it be used for capital? A, we'd have to create a new one and specify what Can it be both, both for either for capital or operating, or does it have to be for one or the other? Right. I don't know, anything, right? Whatever town meeting votes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'd want to make it a two-thirds vote. I'd want to make it a real purpose. Because yeah. 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 we don't know what we're going to need for it. Yeah, I mean, you could add it to the general stabilization <coughs> fund, but then it's not limited to its use. Right, right. right. We'd have to. Okay, so the next town meeting is going to understand. Sorry, Vanessa. Vanessa. excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, so, given the amount of money that we're talking about, given John's point, which is that we had, in fact, specified what this was right. going to be used for, and I think that's a good point. Um, would the board consider perhaps not, uh, if we create the stabilization fund, I think public safety would probably be a good category, not necessarily specific to fire, um, mm -hmm. just because it gives <coughs> future town meetings flexibility on the use, but um, mm -hmm. consider perhaps adjusting it so that a portion of it goes into a stabilization fund and a portion is essentially returned to taxpayers, not as an underride, but as, uh, but well, adjusting taxes do. accordingly. That would have to go to free cash then, though, wouldn't it? No, that, that's why I ask, because Vic can <coughs> set the tax rate a little bit lower and collect a little less revenue. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. That's, that's my, nice. my feeling is that we, you know, we have a, a somewhat of a general agreement of what we want to do. Yeah, for the, the regular town yeah. meeting with the stabilization fund. And we can, the time is not now to hammer out Well, it's probably details. time to discuss that very thing yeah. at, at the beginning of the financial, uh, as a financial forum right. agenda item to get the, to get the, get the will of the, to get the temperature of folks. So right. I don't feel but comfortable for, making that now. For, right, but for Victor, uh, uh, That's a plow, right. plow forward as you have been doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the board will work on that stabilization fund. And anything you do with that won't impact the fiscal 19 tax rate that we're correct. Right. Correct. From a timeline perspective, can we clarify when you need final numbers from us? Because we I know we have the financial forum Probably. next week, and we have the economic development or not um, 
Yeah, the, the economic development meeting on the 17th. Well, uh, the classification on the 16th, so he's right. going to need it right that Thursday. He's going to need it that Thursday. Actually, but the financial yeah. Yeah. That I mean, if, 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 you know, we're going to, we're going to go to the financial forum and, um, could we, you know, do we have do we have to set the rate on the 16th? Could we do it on the 30th if we just wanted more time to noodle on this? I'm not suggesting. I'm It'd just, be I just really, really good if you could set it on the 16th because you never yeah, know how backed up the deal. That's DOR a tricky thing, Barry. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, I just want to understand yeah. the options. Yeah, yeah. So, do we have a meeting? I just want to make sure that if if we need to provide Victor with guidance, that we have time, mm -hmm. that we've yeah. allocated ourselves enough time yeah. to consider what's well, happening. Halfway between now and then. We could give guidance. We're going to be in session. Wait, we can deliberate during that. Yeah, of course. Form. And we're going to hear. Right. We're going to get feedback from the other boards, which is going to be helpful. Right. Yes. So we could give Victor his guidance by next Wednesday. Absolutely. Like the latest. Right. And, uh, okay. Right. My, my plan with the information that you've given me is yes. to have a packet ready to email by next Tuesday. Okay. And willing to receive any questions that I okay. have from anybody. I'll meet you anywhere for a cup of coffee, talk you through each and every permutation. <coughs> okay, so that is for our October 20th. 16th. We have a meeting on the 16th. On the 16th, yeah. And the forum's on the 10th. Right, right. right. The forum's on the 10th. And we'll, we'll have an idea of what, what, what the folks are thinking about. And I mean, at most, what we're talking about. It's a hundred or hundred fifty thousand. So I know you'd want to get this done, and it's, but we're talking about very, very marginal shifting of the numbers. At the, I mean, you, you just well, well right? the, if you do decide something, what I would do is say, here's the presentation I gave you, leaving a hundred thousand dollars on the table, take one and a half cents off. Right. I mean, yeah. that's basically that's what the we'll only way I'll be able to handle it. Which is, I think, that's. Fine. That's fine. All right. And so we have us so so we meet on the sixteenth, yep. and to embrace this once again. Yep. Right. And what you decide for that will not affect the factor that you right. decide. Right. It'll just be the, the actual rate. It'll change the rate, the rate, the rate, rate that by a penny or two below the parity. But give me a call. Let me know if you can do something. When you like say, uh, I'm sorry, it won't. It might change the break even. Okay. Right. Yeah, right. Marginal. So, Mr. Chairman. Right. Yes, John. Does it make sense for you, Victor, to be able to just operate as though we were not gonna, with a yes. footnote, yeah. to the hundred thousand or the hundred and twenty? In other words, do what you were would do as though any of that money would be in a stabilization fund, story. and then you'll give us a footnote that says, if you want to return, you know, X amount of dollars. You know, it's going to trust this board to be smart enough to subtract a couple cents here. Yes, so right. Really I think that's a much better way to put the back at the game. But it's not going to change the shift factor. Yeah. yeah, and 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 again, we're we're <coughs> moving towards a stabilization fund for this money. Right. Yeah. We're discussing options. Yes. Discussion options. Okay. Um, so, Victor, do you have what you need? I am over the moon. <laughs> no, that's why I like to I see you not here. Anticipate this. <laughs> I am happy. I have my marching orders, folks. Thank you very much. All right, thank get you. Get busy. You're not done yet. Yeah, right. thank you He's very much. Thank you. you. It's always you know, a pleasure. The night before is way too. Thanks for coming. Yeah. The entertainment never stops. Victor. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank We're you. getting faster. Yes. Um, all right. Um, so back to the agenda now. Now we have uh, the agreement, the inner, inner. Oh, we're right. this postponed. Yeah, we're postponing that. Oh, that was postponed. Yep. Yep. I apologize. He's still on trial. He's <laughs> still. On. So um, now, here, 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 take it away. Take it away. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. <coughs> So if we get a few quick overview, I won't take up too much time. I figured I would at least give you an update on our hiring and finance because we did have the assistant town accountant. We did promote from within um, the senior administrative mm -hmm. assistant in the accounting department for the last 22 years, and she was promoted to the assistant Great. town accountant. Mm -hmm. um, and that they did her role, and then we promoted somebody else from mm -hmm. within to that. 
Um, during that process of um, interviewing for the assistant town accountant, we identified a very good candidate mm -hmm. um, who worked for another community, had 12 years of experience, and it's been my experience since I've been here that we don't get a lot of people who already work for municipalities, yeah. so this is a gem. Yeah. Um, so we tried to bring her in um, to the accounting um, department. Um, as a senior administrative assistant as well, was one of the positions that was vacated. Um, and she had accepted the offer, and then her community countered. <laughs> and we lost her because of vacation time. Oh. Um, and so, you know, she had four weeks vacation, you know. So one of the things that I think that they're proposing in the upcoming personnel policies is kind of something to kind of compensate somebody who already is working in municipal government you know, it's just if they're moving from one municipality to another, that they don't um, lose vacation time. Because when you've gotten up to four weeks, coming down to two again, it's, it's hard. Just gonna, yeah. It's hard. You know, so she definitely yeah. we, we tried to counter with her, but you know, staying where you are when you're going to get more vacation time, it just ended up. You know, if they're going to match our offer monetarily, right. vacation time is that thing. Is that just a policy change? Personnel um, policy. Complicated because I have authority. I gave her one more week than she would have normally received, but I wasn't willing to give her two yeah. weeks because we have too many employees yeah, going to be disadvantaged. It's just right. fail. So, yeah, so it's one of those things where that's how it's difficult to hire, to get somebody with experience. Yeah. Um, you know, they, with that experience comes this building up of their, you know, time off, and if we can't nope. compete there, then we lose. So we, we did miss out on that particular person. Um, and I just figured I'd mention that just as when personnel policies come across your desk, right. I know that there was something that they were proposing to do something to, you know, make a buffer there um, for the time off. Dan, Dan. I, I just want to ask you quickly, it's a little bit off topic, but our last packet was filled with like 10 pages of some disgruntled person that applied oh, for yeah. Could, could, could give us in a nutshell what that was all about. I don't know how much could, I can given say. Given that it's, but, um, it's kind of been in our packet, so I thought I'd ask. Uh, what, what I'd say is that person was not a good fit for, um, for the group. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So whenever I saw the name come through again, I'd already met the person, had already interviewed him, and did not think it was a good okay. fit. Um, it was nothing personal, just... I'm sorry. Right. I mean, you have that discretion. So uh, sure. I, I read through that and, like, Dan thought of bringing it up, but then, yeah. you know. That's, enough. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. I, I don't want to. No, no, you're fine. I'm sorry. You make good, the good awkward enough. there. Yeah. Yeah. So we did have two retirements in a, in, in a similar fashion. We had um, some promotions from within. So we still have two clerical positions and the administrative one that was turned down. Um, we did identify for the assessing collector, it's a shared position between assessing and collector. Mm -hmm. um, we've identified a good candidate and they're in the process of making an offer, so hopefully we can. And next week we have the other clerk for interviews scheduled for that. So it takes a lot of time to do this process, and we, unfortunately, we only have two people in HR, so you kind of, you know, have the mercy of their time to, to schedule. Well, yeah, one and a half is not even full. So, um, so it's a kind of a slow process, but I figured I'd give you that update that, you know, there were a lot of promotions from within, which were well deserved. Yep. We, but then that creates, I need to now hire another person. So, um, so that's where we're at. But you're hiring people at a lower level. It's wonderful. But if you're promoting from within, you're generally going to be hiring new people at a lower level, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, that's where we are with that. Um, I wanted to give you a little update in terms of what we've been doing the last few months. So um, as June 30th is our fiscal year end, we tend to keep our year open for a couple months because yeah. our experience is, is that our, our vendors don't necessarily get us all our bills <laughs> by you know, a reasonable time frame. So I tend to keep it open longer. We closed on um, September 6th, which is a typical timeline that we do. Um, and then I proceed to start calculating, you know, um, the certified surpluses for the um, enterprise funds, water, sewer, and storm. Mm -hmm. I start with them before I close, and then I start to run the reports for free cash. But I hesitate to um, give any numbers for free cash because there's a uh, when you calculate it, um, any any fund that ends in a deficit actually is deducted from the general fund of free cash, um, and so. Um, if there is a deficit at June 30th, they have uh, a rule that if you've received the cash by September 30th, you don't have to take that deficit. So of course I wait till September 30th yeah. because if we've received the cash from, and, and this is mostly grants, uh, I should say, it's a reimbursement type of situation when you're dealing with grants, they expect you to spend the money and then you submit for reimbursement and you get it. So it's not uncommon to have some of these grants be in deficit at year end, but I don't want to 
heard our free cash position we'll wait to the last poll. Yeah. So I'm in process right now with general fund free cash. It looks very positive. It doesn't look like we're going to have any declining situation. Things look good, and you should see a number at finance form next week. Um, I just want to make sure if I say a number that I'm pretty confident with that number, so I'm not going to state it um, now. But it does look positive. As far as the um, water and sewer, I can give you those. Um, water, um, we had um, four point, just over 4.1 million in fiscal 17. It went up to just under 5.5 million, so it's an increase of just under 1.4 million. Um, and then the sewer went from 4. Point, not just over 4.9 to just under 5.7. That's an increase of Great relief. 767. Um, and then um, stormwater was just under a million. Um, I think I got this reversed. 828 in fiscal 17 and just under a million for an increase mm -hmm. of 150. So that's where we are with that. Um, in the first week of September, as I was closing the year, the auditors started their um, preliminary work. Um, they have been working remotely from their office and I've been uploading to their portal, which doesn't slow them up a bit. In fact, we can overload them and stuff before they even have time to get to it, okay, <laughs> which <okay>. is helpful. <laughs> um, so we've been kind of kind of shifting gears and as they need things, we stop what we're doing and we get them whatever is being requested. Um, the other thing that's happening at this time of year, as soon as I close the year, I start to look at the year report for the school department. Mm -hmm. They have to have an end of year report in by September 30th. There's a portion of that report that is provided by me because the costs actually are paid by the town. So that would be things like benefits, um, debt, a portion of my salary and the salary of the people who work in my department because we pay the bills, we do the payroll. So there's a portion of our salaries that's allocated for the end of year report, just for reporting purposes so that they can kind of get a true cost of what does it cost to run the school because there are things paid on the town side that actually are part of the cost of the school, running the school. So that has been completed and all set and was in and submitted on time. Happy to report. And then the other thing that has to happen at this time of year, as Victor has started talking to you about, is the tax rate setting process. He is way ahead of me. He's gotten all this number certified, and now they're waiting for me. So I will be shipping here very soon and doing a very extensive report for them. And that's what they use to set our tax rate, because it's basically all our budget. You need to know what are you spending, and what if you voted at subsequent town meetings and such. Um, and so once I get that in there, then they start looking at um, our tax rate setting process. And in the interim, I'm also doing free cash. So it depends on how they get to it. Now, what I've yeah. learned is over the last couple of years, it's slowed up the process of getting free cash certified. And it's been very fortunate the last couple of years. We really haven't needed free cash at November town meeting. Mm -hmm. What I've found is that they prioritize the free <coughs> cash calculations or the certifications by who really does need it by November. So last year, we submitted in October. We didn't get certified till January because they put it aside. We didn't need it because they wanted to focus on setting tax rates for communities because they start to get a flux in November of people who, you know, so, so, you so because there's less staff there, we're yeah. seeing um, greater delays. But if I were to say, I need this for November time, they would push me to the top of the list, mm -hmm. and they're just kind of doing it based on priority in that regard. So if you notice that we got our certification in January, it wasn't because we didn't do our part, they kind of yeah. did it to the side. <laughs> so that's that. And the last thing that happens, um, during the um, reporting season is Schedule A. If we don't report our Schedule A by, I think it's January. They schedule A. Schedule A is a, um, it's a financial report for DOR, and if you don't do it, um, they can stop your state aid. We get our state aid monthly, so we don't want that to happen, so it's kind of important. <laughs> um, so um, they do require a lot of reporting at your end, and we're kind of in the midst of it right now. And a lot of other things, actually. You know, it's just fun. It's, everybody wants to see you at a year end. The workers' comp auditor comes out in mid October. It's like, oh my goodness, I just got to get this stuff done. So, um, and then we start our budget, you know, mm -hmm. the finance form next week. So, it's busy times right up until January, I'd say. Um, so, that's where we're at. Um, I think that's all I wanted to tell you is just kind of what we've been doing and how busy we are. <laughs> yeah, I know you're busy. We know, yeah. we know. And we'll see mm -hmm. soon how just how busy you've been. Bob. Uh, just to sort of close the loop um, for the public, <clears throat> last spring when you had the water sewer rate hearing, we told yes. you that uh, we're selling a lot of water because yes. of economic development. Yes. That's the reason why the surplus is so large. It mm -hmm. grew from four to five. 
or whatever. Yeah, remind me, we kept our rates the same last when you, year. When you set your rates in the spring, they're just now effective this quarter. That's true. So there was a lag in oh, terms really? of when the rates hit. So there was a surplus in revenue until then. Yeah, it's like the adjusted. second quarter of the year. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we just got our water to a bill just now. Okay. Shouldn't have jumped too much. Unless your water I think it was water. exactly the same. See? So I just wanted to sort of close that loop yeah. that the uh, jumping hours <laughs> reserves are not unexpected. You know, there's jumping revenue. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I want to say a, th a thank you retrospectively to the taxpayers for funding that halftime position, yes. you, which I think has made a huge difference. Oh, it's yeah. It's, I mean, obviously, because we still have vacancy, we're not experiencing as much of like yeah. the full effect of it. But it would be enormous to me. Yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of time spent, and during this time where there's so many things going on, to have that second person who could be starting to work on something, yeah. rather than me stopping and reshifting my energy, um, will definitely right. save me a lot of time. So I'm very appreciative of that for sure. Um, the the perennial question, Bob, is is why are we not filling these why are we not able to fill these positions faster strong labor market yeah um, we have a list of people who have accepted the job and then not come yeah <coughs> so people with qualifications are mm. shopping around yeah we do have some people for those vacant administrative positions that you're interviewing now though right mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Is it fair to say that there's not a lot of jumping of private sector people into town? That's, so you're, that's you're, fair you're, to say. It, you're kind of in a limited pool of talent, if you will. Uh, um, town town. Yeah, there's so a few is. exceptions to that, but you're generally right. Okay. The vacation thing is tough. Yeah, um, it's subtle things like that. It's subtle, but you know, you, you, right. you're it's sort of you're paying for someone's experience. Mm -hmm. If you think you're paying them vacation time for their experience. Um, but I understand that's a, a, a sticky. We can't. Is that the word? Yeah. But you gotta. You gotta. I mean, you, you have to pay for that. On the other hand, you can't create dissension in the ranks. Yeah, for exactly. Someone bring, you know, I've, I've been here for 15 years. I only get this. Right. Yep. No, so I know. To, I know. I mean, I know. my concern is that, given the sort of um, challenging labor market for those of us hiring. Are we creating a certain situation where we're not getting the best people because we're not competing on salary and apparently we're not competing on vacation time? So either the positions remain vacant or we're sort of getting tier two, right? Because we're not able to get tier one people. So are we really hurting ourselves? And not, you know, there, I don't know what the solution to that is, um, but I feel like we have to come up with something. How are we doing with paying class uh, in that regard? Catching salaries up to well, we're we're, we're done effectively with the past study that's been done in terms of implementing the recommendations. One of, one of the things um, we do collective bargaining, and then we have non-union, so it's two different yeah. processes. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things we're seeing organizational wide, which will be no surprise, is these different appetites for money versus time off, especially sure. in the younger people. It's generational things. Right? So we're trying to create um, options in the unions, and we may want to roll that out in the non unions mm -hmm. so that you that want more money mm -hmm. have that path. You that mm -hmm. want more time off, you have that path. But, you know, uh, you I like that. And yeah. Right. Yeah. It's right. the same money. Yeah, right. yeah. How do you want it? We're beta um, testing in some of our unions. Yeah. Barry, do you have a, a, a question? Uh, Vanessa, I, the, I, I think this is relevant, but Vanessa has a list of um, our, our five goals, and I believe this is one of them, is it not? So, mm -hmm. well, there was, there's our goals for the board, and then there's the goals that we have for mm -hmm. Bob. No, I'm just talking about our, our, our five. Our five. Uh, no, the the topic of um, retention fell under the evaluation process okay. that we did for Bob. Okay. Our goals are strictly things that we would manage. Right, so it's all in your court, Bob. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, I, I will say that hiring is, as I said before, is just about the most important thing I do. Yeah. Um, as, as Lou Gorman once said, uh, hmm. the sun will rise, the sun will set, and I'll have lunch. Mark, labor markets will get strong, will get weak. Yeah. When you hire someone, you've got them. Yeah. So we will never hire someone that we are not com com you know, of course. confident they can do the job. Yeah. 
So maybe someone else could have walked through the door if we had more pay or more vacation time. We don't know. Um, but we leave positions open. We had an engineering position open for two years. We just were not willing to make the compromise. We're going to hire someone that can't do the job. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the best solution short run. Right. Absolutely. But in the long run, in our business, I think it is. Can you cover with consultants and some situations like that? Yeah. I will say that even though we didn't get that candidate, there were, there were a lot of candidates that we were going to interview because they have very good resumes, just not municipal experience. They have this yeah, skill right. set that I can train up into the municipal. Yeah, right. so well, it's you not that, that we don't yeah. have yeah. good candidates, but when right. you see somebody with municipal right. experience, yeah, that's an easier around. transition. Yeah. Um, but there, there are people oh, that, you know, maybe you want to come into municipal work who don't have the experience but have the right skill set, especially when we're talking accounting, it's kind of... It, yeah. is not, it would be difficult to transition them in, but somebody who has the municipal um, is the most attractive client because, I mean, um, the most attractive employee because they may already tap your munis software, they might already just understand how it all works, which is helpful. But we did see, we've gotten a fair amount of resumes, and definitely um, people were going to look at for sure. We've met some great people. It's just, it's hard. It's time consuming and yeah. very, very busy. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you have to hire the right person because you have to live with that person. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. And then we're always looking at fit, you know, personality right. fit too. We we need to wrap this up, um, but we're going to have to keep talking about attracting people. And thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. Thanks for working. Thanks, guys. Good night, Bill. Um, okay. Um, I'll, peek, I'll peek in his minutes. <laughs> thanks. Um, so. Right now, um, we have to do approval of the minutes for September 11th, 2018. Um, Motion to approve the minutes for September 11th. Uh, second. Great. Dan seconds. Um, discussion. I'm doing a quick scan. I thought I had something, but maybe not. The only, I had one. Do you need to retrieve, retrieve Barry to finish this up? He, 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 My edits are pretty insignificant. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, they were fairly straightforward. Yeah. yeah I, I actually, were. the only thing I wanted to add, where is the meet, is the location mm -hmm. policy? Oh, the select board goals. I thought it might be helpful um, if someone didn't watch the meeting just to list what our five goals ended up being. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, which were policy, I, I capital, know. Oakland Road, housing trust, and the new EDC. Uh, that was 6A5. Yeah. 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 So Good. there is suggested um, on page 6A5 under select board goals, just adding what the five goals are. Um, sure. And, and who is this, who, who is, oh, and we, the, we, we agreed to the, the parents. Right, so uh, select board policy is all of us. Um, it will be broken down further. Some of us already are. Capital projects is me and John. Yep. Oakland Road is also me and John. The housing trust is Barry and Andy. And the new EDC is Dan and Barry. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I, you know, I didn't have time to go back and, and look at the video, Caitlin, and this may be a case of what I meant to say. Um, <laughs> oh, but when I, when I described the community meeting that they had in the library, um, I said, did I, say, did I really say they made a plan on how to move forward? Um, what page are you on? Oh, Jesus. Is this the neighborhood that got together? Yeah, the neighborhood gr group in the library. I wasn't there, so. Yeah, no, um, I wasn't and I, did, I'm a fr I didn't have time to check. But, but uh, well, they, they <coughs> just leave it in. If, 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 if you know, if, I don't know. Which meeting was that? This was the meeting in the library um, that um, a member of the Board of Health came to, Gene came to. Uh, the, were you the there? community rat discussion. I was not dressed up as the rat. You were not dressed up. You were not the rat. Still on the library. I was wondering. I thought there was a rat there, though. Yeah. So, okay. so, so, no so hold, hold, hold on, folks. Hold on. No, we're not. So, um. I thought the plan to move forward was like writing the letter and stuff. Ah, thank you. I think that's kind of what. Yeah, good. Okay. Perfect. Um, 
and the national grid uh, town council you you have you write town council did not did respond with the letter cautioning the board to on moving forward which he did although he believes national grid, grid would never I don't think he said never I think it would be highly unlikely or something okay. like that just check that um, it's, it's, it's a small but I think important change anyone else yeah yes Dan no um, uh, mo uh, so we have a, a motion a second we have some uh, uh, amendments uh, all in favor of the motion with the small amendments okay great now uh, that was five that was, that was five um, thank you gentlemen and before we leave we need to uh, break or we need to end the open meeting well I need to make a motion yep. yes yep. Uh, uh, move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of a body and not to return to open session second discussion roll call, roll call vote John yes Vanessa yes Andy yes Mary yes aye <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, we'll take a two-minute break, break and meet you next door. Thank you.